Curated by Kohl's latest collection is now available in select stores and at Kohl's.com. For a limited time, shop unexpected new favorites like reusable drinkware from Corksicle and fun arts and crafts from UV. Warmies heatable plush toys are perfect for little ones. Homesick handcrafted candles are a great gift to make anyone feel at home. And who doesn't love sweet treats from Candy Club? Shop curated by Kohl's for these digital need-to-know brands and more. Tap the banner now or visit Kohl's.com. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. From Asthma Core Studios near Detroit, Michigan, it's Unregimented. Gangsters, what's up, guys? And now, here are your hosts. Well, uh, welcome to Unregimented number 188. I'm Chris. I'm Aaron. I'm Rich. And yeah, I know, right? We're, we're recording this on the on the day that, uh, well, day many people were looking forward to, maybe even some people dreading, but everybody seemed to get something out of the Comey hearings, whether they were looking for something to stoke their their ire for Trump, or proof that uh, that Comey was uh, is crooked in some way. Or if you just wanted a good laugh, like uh, I don't know if you guys saw any of the the portion with John McCain. I uh, did not. No, I didn't, I, I didn't I, see I, any of it. I have to admit, I heard that the yeah. late night hosts were live tweeting it. Who was who was involved in that? Uh, well, it was reported. It, be- in, it was reported in sports uh, circles that he claimed to have said he he was watching the Arizona Diamondback, Diamondbacks, the baseball team, the night before, so he would stayed up late. Oh, uh, that's his it's... excuse? Because uh, he talked some mad shit. So I, well, I watched the whole thing, or at least I I think I saw up to John McCain. He must have been dead last on that panel. I know they had him at the very end. And, uh, and it seemed like Comey was working his way from the in out and alternating because uh, he kept having to, like, shift if somebody would address him. But when he finally got to John McCain, I had I was watching it at work on my iPad while I worked and mostly just listening to it and lost my internet before I could get to John McCain. So I had to go find it online and it is insane. I mean he I don't know, he he looks tired, I'll give him that, but he looks like really out of it too. And that he it wasn't even clear what he was asking Comey. Because he starts talking about, well, you had this investigation between possible collusion of Trump-Russia, and then you have this investigation of Hillary. And then you come out and say that Hillary's innocent, but that you're not done investigating Trump. And Comey's like, yeah? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I understanding? Is that a question? Like, <laughs> it, it, he, he couldn't get his head around the fact. He's like, when you... When you say that this investigation is done and this person's innocent and this this other investigation is ongoing and not looking good, it seems like a double standard. And uh, when you do a tra- Google search on John McCain and Comey, the let's see, adjectives on the page: bizarre, befuddling, confused. Yeah, he. It, it was very confusing. We get, Comey goes no back sense. and tries. To, he, he he tries to clarify. Like he says, "I don't understand what you're you're asking." And the investigation to Hillary was about the handling of her emails and not about any collusion with Russia. And John McCain's just like, "Well, maybe you should be. Maybe you should have been investigating her." Like, where are you pulling this out of? The fuck does that mean? I, I mean. Whether he was whether he was sleepy or whatever, he seemed legitimately confused on the sequence of events. And it's not like they go in there unprepared. I mean, everybody's got their shit on paper. I mean, actually, Comey's the only one that uh, that just uh, winged it, and he he did great. I think. I, don't, I mean, I. Obviously, he didn't give him the raw meat that the uh, that the left was looking for. They seems like a lot of people are 
rather disappointed. I, I think he performed exactly how he was expected to, which would be professional and reasonable. But and certainly a high contrast to what was going on on, on most of that panel, it, especially John McCain. They, oh, yeah, the point that I was making about John McCain. He, you have this all prepared, you know? You have your questions, usually, written out. Maybe that was his problem, that he or himself or didn't have any of his staffers like write out his questions for him so he could read them. But that's what, I mean... What are you really talking about in any investigation except for sequence of events? Isn't that one of the primary things that if you can't lock that down, you can't comprehend what the fuck happened? Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. It, excuses or not, like everybody, there were, <laughs> if you look in the background too, there's like journalists just shaking their head, like, what the fuck is he on? Eyebrows raised across the panel. I mean, is it. Is it possible he just, I mean, he's not exactly a spring chicken. Uh, he just had yeah. a senior moment. I mean, I'm, the man is I'm getting sure. up there. Yeah. I'm Campus sure office meds. Uh, I'm sure that's a possibility. And, yeah, it can happen. But, uh, and if that's true, I hope he has the uh, enough uh, wherewithal to step down. But the probably the least interesting. That was just the most entertaining part of what happened today. The rest of it, I mean, we heard a, a sequence of events that we pretty much already were aware of. There wasn't a whole lot... Uh, shit, I forgot what point I was going to make there. Well, this is the best of us. To, to give it to yeah, you. You ever have your mind just go, like, ju- completely blank? You're having a John uh, McCain I, moment? I smoke pot, yes. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm talking <laughs> shit, and I was just like... Uh... uh well, well, to kind of give you a minute to see if you can remember, I just want, I thought it was interesting that um, I hopped on online and on Facebook, the true believers on either side were declaring like a decisive victory with Comey's testimony. And I was going, am I the only one that, that, that thinks that like it's it wasn't a, a slam dunk for either side? It was. It, it couldn't be a slam dunk. That's not his job. It. It wasn't like he completed an investigation and had results to present to somebody and was waiting for that hearing to do so. It wasn't like he had information that he was holding back. Anything that he couldn't have said while he was in office, he still couldn't say out of office. It's still classified. There's. He's not freed up to say anything more than he did when he was in the position of FBI director. So there wasn't a whole lot to be learned here, it, but it wasn't completely useless either. It showed you that Comey had, well, certainly his personal opinion of Trump was that he was a liar. Outright said that the president lies. And that's the whole reason for these memos. And the Democrats were smart in latching on to that. They kept going back to, uh, I can't remember who it was, but he was asked directly in the other presidents that he's dealt with, has he ever taken these detailed notes after the meetings? And he's, no, with Obama, no, with with, uh, Junior Bush. And he specifically said the only reason that he did it in this case is because he knew that the president was likely to lie about anything, and he needed to cover his ass and make sure he had the the facts straight. And meanwhile, the Republicans wanted to lean on parsing the words, right? Just like back in the day when Slick Willie was asking what the meaning of is is. It depends on your definition. Yeah. The Republicans were hung up on this, on the wording of, I hope. Now... Let's say your boss comes up to you and says, I hope that you can get these reports done by the end of the week. Do you take that as a directive to get those reports done by the end of the week? Or do you go, yeah, I hope so too. We'll see what happens. And then go back to browsing Facebook. And and while the the president isn't, well, he is and and he isn't. He is the boss of the FBI director, but there is a clear separation also. (coughs) So, man, I've just got, I've got too much shit that I want to say about this in my head right now, I think is the problem. 
And it's all like trying to get out the door at the same time, like the Three Stooges. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the, the meaning of the word hope. He was asked directly, has anyone ever been prosecuted a crime by, uh, of a crime for hoping something? And, I mean, it's, it's a ridiculously out, stupid question. Not outside of a Philip K. Dick novel. Right. I mean, what, what, are you going to prosecute someone for what they're thinking? I mean, that's right. And it, well, one of the uh, the Democrats questioning him brought actually Comey brought it up, and he was like, "I was just going to go there." It, when the president says, "I hope that you can see your way clear to end this investigation into Jeff Sessions," uh, or um, no, I think in this case it wasn't Sessions; it was uh, um, uh, Michael Flynn. He said it reeks of. Uh, the quote he said was, oh, what was it? Well, nobody rid me of this meddlesome bishop, I believe was the quote, which was from one of the Henrys, maybe the second. And the, the story goes that he was quoted on one day as saying that there is some particular bishop that was a thorn in his side. He says that, and the next day, that bishop is dead. So it's not, he didn't say go find this bishop and kill him. But the end result was the same and the message was rather clear as to what the intentions were. So what was also interesting about the the line of questioning from Republicans is what they didn't talk about because there wasn't really a whole lot of talk about Trump from them. There wasn't anybody really coming to the defense of Trump. They were just trying to downplay the testimony of Comey and try to make him look like uh, like he was reading into conversations with Trump. What the the reason why this is probably important though is it's, this looks like it's going to lead to possibly Jeff Sessions and maybe even uh, Rosenstein appearing before the the Senate panel. Because Can't recuse yourself from that, Jeff. R- right. Well, I mean, he could plead the fifth, but. We know from many Republican tweets from uh, Paul Ryan and and President Trump himself that nobody pleads the fifth unless they have something to hide. But yeah, the, the what we learned about the behavior of the people around Trump was really interesting. The fact that Sessions seemed rather uncomfortable in the way that like he knew the fact that Trump wanting to meet with Comey was not exactly kosher, but let it happen anyway. That Kushner apparently was hanging around when they had a... He was describing the meeting in the Oval Office, and everyone was asked to leave except for Comey. And Sessions hung around and was like, uh, okay, I'll just, you know, hang out here because that's part of my job. And he's like, no, 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 you can go. And you can go too, Jared. Nobody needs to be here. So... The fact that there are other people that were involved that should have been enforcing the separation between the the White House and the FBI, the separations that that is necessary to carry on investigations, these people hopefully will be held accountable. Well, I hate to sound super cynical, but until anything actually happens, it's all political theater, isn't it? No, it's all part of it. It's it, it, it. So Comey didn't say. I know in my bones that Trump is guilty, which is what I believed everybody wanted him to say. And nothing was going to happen today, and nothing's going to happen if it does for a while. But this is all part of the process. I mean, is the Senate panel the and the, the investigation of the House, are those, which I, I'm surprised is even still going on, the, the House investigation, are these at their heart just political theater anyway? Yeah. I mean... The real investigation is still going on in the FBI, and all this these investigations by the, the Senate and the House are primarily for them to publicly question people and show that they're show their constituents that they're doing their job, you know whether they take this seriously or not, and to uh, you know have a chance to grandstand a little bit. And 
I mean, certainly whatever their their findings are will probably influence whatever decisions are made regarding Trump. But ultimately, their findings are going to come from the FBI investigation anyway. It's not like they have their own private team of investigators. So, yeah, the, the hearings, a lot of it is political theater, but I think it's all necessary just as well. You can't necessarily completely investigate an administration in the dark and then just pop out one day and go, hey, guess what? We found out all this shit and you need to imp- impeach the president. I think this has to be a process if you're going to get... The, you have to get the people involved in it. Yeah, I agree with you there, but I guess I just am... I'm just always... It's, I'm always suspicious of just things like... I, I'm always suspicious of the government doing things to make it, hey, it look like we're doing something and then nothing ever happens. I'm always wary of that I, you know i feel you there. i hope yeah you know i hope they're this isn't something where they're relying on our short memory as you know a general public nowadays yeah but there's there's useful things in in this testimony as well even taking out even if you just looked at the line of questioning that that people took and like i was saying earlier there's there's not a lot there's nobody coming to the defense of trump and saying, you know, what you're implying is besmirching, besmirching the reputation of who I know to be an honorable man and shame on you, sir. Nothing even close to that was said. And also, speaking of what's unsaid, I was reading a, uh, a tweet thread from David Simon earlier. And he was talking about how, if you're not familiar with David Simon... Uh, creator of many great books and and TV shows, including uh, Homicide and The Wire. And he's spent a lot of time with police. They are central to a lot of the stories that he tells. And he's spent a lot of time with investigators, and he's seen investigations go down. And he talks about what is unsaid, the things that are, are not asked, and how they can be just as important as what's said by a person. And he's speaking specifically about Donald Trump. And uh, he says, I'll just read from it. Here I have it. At no point does Trump make any concerted effort to discern whether or not Russia did in fact attempt to interfere in the election. Indeed, he notes the claim has created a cloud over his governance, so he can scarcely say that it isn't of real concern to him. His concern is premised in the meeting. Yet he doesn't inquire Yet, he doesn't inquire as to what Comey and the FBI is discerning about Russia's role. He doesn't even do so as a means of disparaging the claim, i.e., I'm sure you're finding out that there's nothing to the claims of Russia interference, right? It doesn't come up. In this regard, I am reminded of every innocent and guilty man I ever witnessed in an interrogation room. Uh, He goes on to describe a specific incident but uh, it kind of sums it up here at the end. Let me run down to the end here. To me, the the one thing that I think is getting buried in everything in the Comey testimony is the fact that he's flat out said Russia did interfere with our election. He didn't leave any room for any doubt in his mind in his statement. And I, and, I can't, and nobody I can't challenged that, him on it. Yeah, and I can't believe that's just like it's like a, the giant turd in the middle of the fucking dinner table that no one's talking about. It's like really. Because we've been playing the game of laughing it off or, you know, it didn't happen, it's fake news, whatever. Here's someone who actually looked into it, and in his mind, he's like, yeah, yeah, they did interfere. And it's only more damning. They, and they will continue to interfere. That it is an ongoing campaign of interference from the Russians. Oh, Definitely. And, I mean, you know, the, their attempt to do it with the French election proves that. I mean, this isn't right. just isolated to us. This is this is them fucking with people basically, you know, at will. And I just, it just blows my mind because I, why is this not – why is this not trending on Facebook? Yeah. Why is the argument over, you know, the word – his use of the word hope trending on Facebook, which tells me pretty much even the people who claim that – Russia didn't help Trump get in office at all. Deep down, they know, well, yeah, he, you know, they did, but I don't care because my guy won. Because the bitch of it is, for everything you could say about the man on, from either side, in support or to try to detract from him, 
you can't say he didn't come off as truthful during his testimony. At oh, least Co- to me. Yeah, Comey? Oh, yeah. He no, came off I've... as just blunt truthful. So well, I... it's interesting that we that, that his story, we've seen, we've heard more details to flesh out the, the meetings between Trump and Comey. But none of the core facts have changed over the course of the, the last month that we've been hearing about this. But the, just to wrap up my point on, on, or David Simon's point, rather, what he was describing was that a, an innocent man will always ask a lot of questions because they don't fucking know anything. They're trying to figure it out, too. They want to they wanna know more about whatever they're being accused of because they're trying to figure out how they got roped into it. Yeah, why am I sitting here? Whereas a guilty man always forgets to ask a lot of pertinent questions because he already knows. So the fact that at no point, like, Trump just goes right into, I hope you can drop this shit and I want loyalty from you. You'd think if he was innocent of all this, he'd first go, what the fuck are you guys looking at that makes you think this? You know, first of all, if I was being accused of a crime that I was innocent of, the first question I'm going to ask myself is, what the fuck am I doing that makes me look so guilty in this situation? And I'm going to ask that of the cops, too. What You want to know why you're being roped into it, unless you already know. So... He, in that respect, I, yeah, he, Trump definitely comes off as, as guilty in this. Even though, you know, Comey, like I was saying, he doesn't come out and say, I feel like Trump's guilty that he was colluding. You know, and let's clarify it. When I say guilty, it could be guilty of direct collusion with the Russians. It could be guilty of looking the other way. Hey, Go ahead and do your back channel, Jerry, but don't tell me about it because I'm going to leave you hanging out to dry when all this shit goes tits up. So the the bone that conservatives walked away from this was the big one. It wasn't the, nece- the, the definition of wish. It was the fact that according to some, and talking far right, like Breitbart right, they say that Comey damns himself as outing himself as a leaker during his testimony because he speaks about the memos, right? So the, the memos that he took directly after his meeting with Trump, he has those and, plans on, and, u- and is planning on using those for what he would assume would be his eventual testimony in his firing. And in the meantime, Trump starts spouting off a lot of lies, and it was the big one about, well, not necessarily a lie, but a, a, a bluff that Comey better hope that there's no tapes from our conversations. And he, when Comey heard that, he said, well, you know, hey, this guy's a known liar. He's going to try and get his version of the story out there. So I'm going to go ahead and leak my memos. Well, the right had a field day with that because he's leaking classified information. No, these are just memos. None of it's classified. Well, this is a FBI memo. This is this, that's a a felony. He shouldn't be able to uh, to leak any of that stuff, even if it's not classified. No, actually, it's not an official FBI release to everyone memo. It's. It, I mean, he might as well have done it on his phone. He mentions classified once because of the laptop that he used to write the first memo. After his first meeting with Trump, he decides, I got to write this down because this seems like it's going to be a conversation that I'm going to be asked about in the future. And he grabs the first laptop that he has, which is a classified secured laptop. But the memos were his. The memos were his recollections. He doesn't say anything in the memos that he couldn't have legally said in his testimony. He doesn't break the law. And he doesn't leak any government documents. But, you know, the problem isn't with the facts. It's the people who leak the facts. And the leakers are the big evildoers in all of this. This is all part of the deep state. So well, this, this, this proves that Comey is part of the deep state. He is one of the leakers. <laughs> it's, it's ludicrous. But 
hey, take what you can get because uh, this is apparently the hill that you're going to die on and history will laugh at you if it even remembers. Well, didn't we, didn't we have this conversation with Edward Snowden about what he did may be illegal, but it's the very definition of the word patriotic? He's letting us know that our government's you know, fucking us over. I mean, there's a point where you, if if you quote unquote are a, are, are a you leak or a, are a whistleblower, you know, if you're if you're not doing it for personal gain and you're doing it honestly, I, I mean, you know, obviously Snowden did it at a huge detriment to his to his own self. Right, you're not doing it for gain. You're doing it for, at at your own risk, knowingly yeah. that knowing that you could be prosecuted, go to jail, end up in fucking Guantanamo. Who fucking knows? Uh, if I mean, they if they hit you with you're... treason, you can you be you can even be executed for having. I a mean, weed? no, 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 oh. for le- for for <laughs> le- le- I, th- I thought you said if they catch you with trees. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I said if you're if you're charged if you're convicted of treason. <laughs> no no, Jeff Sessions hasn't got, hasn't got that law passed yet. He, that's where he wants to go. But, <laughs> right. like, yeah. There is a, there is a new leaker this week and the uh well the name of the leaker was reality winner yeah my first my first thought is these these code names are getting these these code names are getting really stupid (laughs) (laughs) and then i find out that that's the person's legal name (laughs) reality winner reality winner yes her last name is winner and her first name's Reality. I mean... <laughs> is I, it... Did I'm her parents thinking, lose a bet or something? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't... That is just boggling to is my Is that the mind. ultimate millennial name? I, it's like, just... It's, this is my child, Far from New York Volkswagen. Right. Like, that must be the... Their version... The new version of hippie names. But this isn't even a millennial. She's not even a millennial. Yeah, so she, has she, has involved. She, has, she has to be our age or a little bit older. One of the, you know, somewhere around She's there. From California, Florida. What? What's this California, California involved at all with this woman? I don't know. But what about reality winner? Uh, reality winner is uh, is has been arrested for the leak because she didn't cover her tracks. But this was. Supposedly, the the leak is about the the fact that there were attempted hacks of uh, by the Russians of companies that produced um, voting machines. Which, I mean, a lot of people want to take as this is proof of that that, that there were votes hacked, and and a lot of people on the other side. Their main defense of why all this is bullshit is because no votes were hacked, and that, that's why this issue really bothers me. Well, if the they were going to hack of, the votes, wouldn't they have had them win the popular vote too? So then they could say unequivocally, "I won the popular vote and the electoral right. college." I guess that's the hole in that. I think kind of. Yeah, but to, to put right. the tinfoil hat on, Trump kept saying, with complete certainty before the election, "If I don't win, this election is rigged." That makes it they, now. It's just how he comes off. There's no. I have no proof that I can throw, throw out there. You know, for this, but it sounds like someone who knows the results beforehand. And he's claiming, well, if I, I know for sure because it's rigged for me to win. If I don't win, and someone rigged our job of rigged further rigged the rigging job we did. I mean, I guess uh, I just. I, th- I think if this ultimately is a separate issue from what's going on with the collusion between Trump and Russia. Maybe it's related. Who knows? Real quick, I Aaron, just, I, you're coming through, yes. Aaron, real quick. You're coming yeah. through like you, you're, you're coming through like on a tin can with a string attached to it. Really? I don't know if that's... Yeah, right, I don't let me, know yeah, if yeah, let me try my connection. Yeah, Chris is coming through crystal clear. Okay, is that any better? That's better. Yes. Okay, so what was I saying? Uh, all right. The, the idea, the question as to whether Russians tried to or even successfully hacked 
our voting system, our actual, you know, computerized voting system, not the election, not people's minds, but actually manipulated the vote in this country is definitely a serious one I, and should be, everyone should be for full investigation of that. It's the tying it to the possible collusion between Trump and Russia that really irks me and is not going to move the conversation forward. We, we can't go back in time and redo this election. And even if the, the votes were hacked, it wasn't enough to give Trump the popular vote, like you pointed out. So what does it really mean? I mean, what does it mean to the next election? Everything. If our system's vulnerable, we need to fix it before our next election, period. What does this mean to what do we do with Russia? Or uh, with Russia, with Trump? Absolutely nothing. It doesn't change. We don't have a new vote. We don't try Clearly doesn't and, get flown in with a helicopter and go, hey, just right. kidding everybody, she's president now. We don't no, try and unhack the machines and figure out what the actual tally might have been. No, because the states, first of all, the states, would, the, the representatives would have voted how they are going to vote anyway. It's not going to change anything that much where he's going to lose electoral votes. And it's done. The only way we're getting rid of him is impeachment or he gets so frustrated he quits. But to me, that, that's, that's not even the issue of if Russia did tamper with, like, and hacked voting machines, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what's in the past is in the past. We have to. One, fix that so it doesn't happen again. And two, we now know we have to be a lot more vigilant against these types of attacks and fuckery in the future. I'm not looking to... It's not going to get Trump out of office. Look, there could be a fucking smoking gun that says that every fucking vote for Trump was a hacked vote from Russia. And I don't think it's going to matter. It's not going to get him out of office. No. That would that would start so much shit, like, I, and and maybe maybe it's a little hyperbole. I don't know, but I, I think it would actually cause some some like there'd be violence in the fucking streets because yeah, no, the Trump people well, are the well, ones. I mean, with there the already guns. is. Remember that, right? No, there I'm already about, is, like, but there'd be more. Yeah, I'm talking shit that's gonna make like you know pushing a dumpster back and forth at each other fucking look like you know romper room. So yeah. the, we need to learn the lesson, fix the problem. And then, and then be even more vigilant in the future because just like we've said many times on this show, you and Jay know better than probably even Chris and I because you do tend to you, you work in tech more than him and I. If someone wants something bad enough and it's, it's hackable, it's going to get hacked. That's just all there is to it. There's no yeah. foolproof 100%. You are 100% protected all the time. It's impossible to do. And way too many people who just take for their smartphones and, you know, their, their home connections for granted think that. Mm-hmm. And right, this, because this is a wake-up they, call. You're got, you, if you think that, you are wrong. We have computers powerful enough to make any kind of document, any kind of file encrypted to the point where you cannot break it. It is not possible. It is so tough that even doing your typical brute force, just hitting it with information until you crack it, is not going to work. No matter, how, it would take thousands of years to crack some of the code that just goes into your your basic email transfer or text message. But that doesn't mean it's not hackable. Anything's hackable. If somebody made it. Somebody else can hack it. So honestly, I mean, I I don't know enough about tech to say what would be a solution to something like that. But that's almost a more important question than what do we do with Trump? Unless we want to have nothing but Trump and politicians like him for the foreseeable future. We've got to solve this, this problem first, even if no votes were manipulated in the last election. It's only a matter of time if we are not vigilant and we also know that russia is involved in trying to influence elections all over the world and certainly england is one of my they had the election in england today and if you didn't hear they don't have final results yet as the time we are recording this but their exit polls which 
I guess are, are usually extremely reliable. I'll say that majority of people are turning out for liberals, that Theresa May and, and her party are probably going to lose a lot of seats. Now, I'm quite confident in saying that Russia was probably involved in disinformation and possibly even attempted hacking when it comes to this election in England. But it didn't go the way that they would have wanted it to. They want Theresa May to remain in power. They don't want liberals that don't fall for terror scares. So it's kind of interesting that England is going more liberal despite Russian influence, while not only did we, quote-unquote, fall for it, but we still have half the country arguing that it's just no big fucking deal, even if it did happen. It either didn't happen or it didn't. It's no big deal. Yeah, and you got people uh, besides that. Fuck! I had it. I lost it. Son of a bitch. A lot of that going around tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, apparently. Did we side slip into the weedsman at some point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I am in Oregon. Just saying. <laughs> well, anyone who says it, it happened. Oh, no, you still have people arguing about the results. I said, so I should say he's president now five months, and we still got people going back and forth about the results. It's over. It's done. Yeah. Right, this, yeah. It's, we had that post 2000, though. I mean, that went on until basically 9 11 reset the fucking. The national argument after the 2000 election. I mean, I mean yeah, I know that the phrase "not my president" in that from the 2000 election, and that where oh, that yeah. came from. You heard yeah. a whole lot of that. You heard pretty much, uh, yeah, eight, eight, what, fifteen in the morning on, on September 11, 2001, is when that shit stopped. And before that, it was just constant calls for impeachment. That he's he's placed there illegally by the Supreme Court, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So these people are just those people are just whatever. They're not going to shut up. They're going to keep harping at this. They're like the people that say Obama was born in Kenya. He shouldn't be a president. You know, right? It's yeah, illegal was, for him uh, to be president. Right. The the more that Donald Trump makes it harder for his supporters to defend his behavior, the more talk we hear about what Barack Hussein Obama did and Hillary Clinton and oh you want to criticize Trump for this well what about this and what about that and Hillary had slaves and Barack Obama's a Muslim so yeah well, I, again it's it look for what's not said I think that's the theme of all of this look look at what's not being said even by people who are you know I, I mean I'd have to call anyone a supporter that is a supporter of Trump at this point a diehard supporter because he is not making it easy. Oh, yeah. And, just, uh, and, and there's not a lot of defense of Trump. Even the defense of Trump that they have is basically saying that he's a novice. Well, he's not a, he's not a seasoned politician and doesn't know how all the ins and outs of the way that Washington works and that's how these other uh, tricky politicians are, are tripping them up. They're, they're setting traps for them. He's not, he's not uh, doing anything illegal by trying to stop an investigation by firing the FBI chief. He just didn't know it was wrong. Poor Donnie. He's only, a, he's only 69 years old. You can't, have it fucking, you can't have it both ways, people. You either crush him. Either he's oh. the smartest man in the world with enough business sense to make any deal happen. He misses his old life. Or he's right. not. He misses his what? He misses his yeah. old life. Oh, Remember? yeah, yeah. On top you of that, knew since it was when, be so hard. who knew? Since, since when has, at the, at, at the highest elected position in the United States... Since when has it been acceptable from that from that position down to the lowliest cum mopper in a fucking stroke booth that work that you know that works at a stroke booth place to say, oh, I didn't know that was against the law, and they go, oh, okay, well, ignorance of the law, well, that that means we can't charge you. That's like one of the first things I learned. Exactly. Well, I mean, try tell, try tell them, numbers, try telling the cop. I didn't know that speed limit was 40. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. What did Dave Chappelle go, say? That's the white man defense? Uh, I don't know. 
Yeah. The white guys can get I, away with white guys can get away with saying that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, that, I heard it directly from a cop. I think it was more yeah. like. It, well, actually, it wasn't that. I think it was more like I didn't know I was going that fast, or or didn't, no, it wasn't that. I can't remember what it was. I got pulled over for something stupid. And I was like, I didn't know that was illegal. And he oh, I remember. Said, Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Is probably what he said. Yeah. I was riding in the left lane when the traffic was clear on a two lane highway, and he's like, "That's passing lane. Shouldn't be cruising around in it." He didn't give me a ticket for it. I was like, I didn't know. I, you know, before I didn't know that he wasn't going. Before I knew he wasn't going to give me a ticket, I said. I didn't know that was illegal. And he's like, ignorance of law is no excuse. And he said, the more you know. I actually said, <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. Half the battle. <laughs> and he has to step out of the car, please, yeah. sir. Right. There's a lot of wanting to have it both ways going around, though, even from the Comey's testimony today. People wanted to pull out of there that, uh, that this... This proves that the president wasn't under investigation because Comey said that, you know, he, he corroborated what Trump said to him, that he wasn't under investigation at that time. Yeah, well, guess what? He is now. So I don't know what that proves, but this, uh, other people wanted to use his uh, Comey saying that he was, Trump wasn't under investigation as proof that, that, even, that Comey was colluding with him in some way. But, Whatever. Either either you think that Comey's re- uh, testimony is reliable, or you don't. You can't cherry pick it. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's once again uh, what we were talking about in the in the group chat. You know, uh, we we we're post facts. We're in the post facts era. It's it's not what is proved. It's what you want to believe is true. I want this to be true. I feel this is true. So. Hence, it's true, and I think you said probably the the best thing I've heard in a response to to that nonsense, which is unless I'm touching you, I don't want to hear about what, how you feel. <laughs> 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 As, by the way, I'm totally stealing that because I get a lot of I feel this way. I don't give a fuck how you feel unless okay. I'm touching you. So just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a load that should have been swallowed. Apparently, yeah. your mother felt different. Here we are. Okay, so right. Yeah. But but you can't tell people that they can't feel that way because you're oppressing them in some way. Well, let's get this straight. I don't give a fuck how you feel. That means you can feel however you want. But when you start imposing those uh, those feelings on other people as if they're universal facts, that's when we have a problem. Well, we have a lot. I mean, and this is not just. I don't want to say, once again, I don't want to pile on to a certain generation who I'm not going to, I'm not going to name because we never get through a podcast anymore without shitting on them at least once. But I got to tell you, I'm coming around on the millennials, but continue. I, I, I just, we have a, a big problem in this country from all walks of life, from all ages, all political affiliations anymore of people going I feel two plus two equals five, therefore my feeling is fact. And it's like, no, it's not. And fa- and, and the facts, ironically, the fact that we can't accept facts makes having honest conversations impossible, which leads us to the bullshit gridlock we're in as a society. For we can't have an honest conversation because someone's feelings are going to get hurt. And we have we forgotten that... that the truth don't give a shit about no one's feelings. I mean, the truth is yeah. the truth. It, it's, it, it's amoral. It doesn't have an agenda. It doesn't care. Well, amoral is not the proper term, but it, it doesn't care about what side you're on. And I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, it, it makes it almost impossible to have conversations with certain people because anything, anytime you bring up something, no matter how much you back it up with facts, no matter how much proof you have, they just go back to... Well, I don't feel that way. So, and then they label you something. You know, they label you a snowflake or an alt writer Mm -hmm. or whatever. And then that's the end of the conversation. That's it. And I mean, we kind of touched on this on on this week's Sporgy, but it's to the point where when I hear someone yell racist, sexist, homophobe, Islamophobe, whatever the fuck, 
I pretty much go, okay, what proof do you have? And if they don't immediately come with some 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 cold hard facts, I dismiss what they say and I go, okay, well, you are now in the suspect pile. Everything that comes out of that fucking hole under your nose is suspect because it's you're not calling someone a racist based on a behavior, beliefs, or whatever. You're saying it because you don't like their what what they said. And if what now if they're given an opinion. Yeah, I can understand that. An opinion is, you know, that's why we have the saying. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has them, and they mostly stink to other people. But when we're talking facts and we're talking in reality, that's not people's opinion. And people get that mixed up. It's just like people get the best and their favorite mixed up. If you say, who's the best at whatever, people will start telling you who their favorite is. Well, that doesn't mean they're the best. I mean, it's. It, I, I don't know. It's. It's... Yeah, there's no objectivity to it. The- I, I've actually gotten into a, a, a discussion with someone who was arguing with me that comedy is not subjective and would not what? give. I would one have just inch. left. I did like the Homer Simpson where he just leaves. It's pretty much R- what I'd have done. R- right, like it's math. Like there's only yeah. one equation that equals joke, mm-hmm. and that's it. That's and. Uh, th- What's scary is this person was taking that So it's not and art, it's it. science. It's hard exactly. science. Exactly. That is a bizarre point of view. And, and I'm f- I'm finding it more and more often uh, uh, once again of people from all walks of life and all political persuasions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is that that no, it's not subjective. Everything's objective. You know, it's it's hard and fast rules. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> That is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. three, peop- three well, people can read a book and three people can take three different things from that book. And uh, how anyone can argue with that, I don't know. As, as much as they're, you know, I listen to Adam Carolla's show every day. I listen to most of his podcasts, actually. And there's still plenty of times where he'll piss me off. But none more so when he starts talking about what, what is good and bad music. That you have to oh, objectively he has take horrible as taste in fact, music. regardless of of what you like to listen to, you have to accept that you know Lou Reed is a shitty musician, and uh, I don't know who who he really likes. Uh, well, it doesn't even have to be somebody John Hyatt. Like. Je- yeah, John Hyatt. Yeah, John Hyatt. It is an excellent musician and Lou Reed is a shitty one because if Lou Reed could sing right, he would do so. And that's what makes good musicians is technical ability. I'm like, motherfucker, like, no. (laughs) Dude, Kurt Cobain was a horrible musician, but a great songwriter. It's not science. But I I think that's... Maybe this is kind of tied into our our kind of... uh, our general uh, boy, I'm losing all my words today. Our poo pooing oh, of science, poo poo, in general, our our dismissiveness when it comes to science, because what I, I think what most people believe to be science is the truths that it, they have figured out in their own head. I mean, everybody does it, but it. I, I think uh, until more recently, I, I thought that most people understood that, you know, it's it's just not a fact that whatever your favorite band is, is the favorite band in the world, or that there's, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this one. Well, I, once again, we it, it seems like these people want to live in a world where science is subjective and their opinions are objective. Right. And that's completely backwards. That uh, that is but not that, how that's not how any of this works. <laughs> but honestly, no. Rich, I don't think this is a millennial problem. And even if it no, was a millennial I, I, problem, it's been put upon them. I mean, they, millennials didn't sprout. They didn't. They weren't raised in test tubes in outer space and beamed down to Earth. We raised their asses. Generation think, X, looking at I you. Think, I don't have yeah. any fucking kids. But oh, no, I, we you. raised a bunch of kids. Tears. We wanted to be their best friends and make sure that not that they didn't have to do any hard work. And oh, and and, and, and now we want to sit back and complain valid. that 
Right. No, that's I've totally put that at defeat of Gen X. I've said that before on this show. I don't understand why boomers get the hate from millennials that they do, and Gen X gets fucking basically ignored. The only thing I can think is because we just have such a reputation of being the 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 slacker generation, the eh, apathetic generation, you know, shrug our shoulders at everything, that they're like, well, you won't even care if we blame you, so we're not even going to bring you up. Because you guys will just go, eh, well, whatever. And it's, but it's the truth. We're the ones that, mostly we're the ones that raised the millennials. I, but I will say this. I don't think it helps that we have a whole generation who's came up now with the internet always being there. And with a few keystrokes and five minutes, you can find a group to be, become a part of. And it's just one big echo chamber and bubble that you can isolate yourself in and you're constantly getting your opinions reinforced there's never any there's never any challenge to your opinions you never have to defend your 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 the stances you take and mm -hmm. anybody who tries to to, to tr and and this is this is what I'm I'm hearing from all walks of life people that are our age that are still in college people that are teenagers and in their early 20s that are in college there is like no more debate on college campuses in a lot of classes. It is do not this is how we think. Do not challenge this or else your whatever label they throw on you. And that's a very dangerous thing because the whole point of college was to expand your horizons, to get you to challenge the way you've been thinking, to get you out of your comfort zone. And now you have college students going, This is our home. We shouldn't feel challenged here. Excuse me? Since when do we want our intellectuals Wrong. to go, I don't have to defend anything I say because I don't feel I should. And that's, that is, yeah, I'm sorry. You love the millennials all you want. The fact still remains that, like I said, they've been raised in a world where they've had this in their entire life. They've been able to go and find some group for whatever the fuck and they join it and it's just like i said one big echo chamber and they can isolate themselves in it and they start thinking that oh well we think this way so everyone should think this way i mean i've never i don't know maybe it's because i i don't i, I think everybody has a little authoritarian streak in them some people it's a lot wider than others yeah but i don't i, I, I don't think that. i don't think that i, I i've ever been like you must think exactly like me to any of my friends, to any of my teachers, to any of my coworkers about any subject. Now, there'll be subjects where I'll just look at them and go, I don't know where the fuck you're coming from and how you think that way. So let's just not even talk about it no more because we're just pushing air at this point. No one's going to. You you are so I'm willing to bend so much to try to understand where you're coming from. And you're not given one centimeter. There's no give to you. You have no flex to you. I can't deal with that. And what? They There's go, people like that? And they go, hey, I won the do argument. Do a podcast with? <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they go, hey, I won the argument then. I know, right? You gave up. And it's once again, no, you didn't win. I'm just not going to waste my time with ignorance and, and willful ignorance on top of it to where you know. Yeah. That there's other there's you know that there's facts out there that contradict your beliefs, but you just go stick my fingers in my ears, close my eyes, and go la 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 la. I don't want to hear it. Then you right. are a lost yeah, cause. To me. It, it's like uh, every Twitter war is won by the the person who posts last. And they're like ah, see, he's got nothing to say to that. I'm like, or maybe they just went on with their lives, did something else, stopped giving mm -hmm. a fuck about whatever you were bitching about. Yes. Realize, you, you realize that I'm done with this. Realize one of the oldest memes on the internet is true. <laughs> Even if you win an argument on the internet, you're still retarded. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know, I. I it, well, it's it, it it's I don't know, but it it's scary because, like I said, it's it's now we're starting to see it full force in politics. To where, like I said, today just it, it was very, it was just fucking surreal. It was odd to me to see the Kool Aid drinkers from both sides of the political aisles like jumping up and down, like we won, we won. Like it was, you know, 
victory day all over again. And I'm going, what did what, what first of all, what did you win even if you did have a clear and decisive victory? Second right. of all, how could you look at that and think that that's like a, like once again a slam dunk? And the well, when I, I, I don't I, even I post- think it was about we won. It was about you lost, you lost. Ha ha. See, that's okay, that's yep. That's what I was kind of we all uh, lost. I was, I was taking the long way around to get to that, but that oh, I'm, is, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're absolutely right, and I'm and thank you for for being uh, having in, injecting some brevity into it because I was trying to find a way to say that, and you just said it. So thank you. But that's it's like it's not about who's right. It's about I proved you wrong or you're wrong, and yeah. that are, are we really are we really like moving forward making any progress with that i mean it's like being in a relationship where every argument you get into you don't argue to try to get the other person to see your point you argue with them to completely crush them to the point where they just stop talking and then you take a victory lap that's not it's a not relationship even a re- that's going to last long yeah i i wouldn't even call most of what i hear see read as arguments because it, a, an actual argument I, I happen to actually be a fan of arguing <laughs> I mean not in situations where you're necessarily really mad but a good argument where you can talk to somebody who has an opposing viewpoint but is intelligent is rather entertaining I find but most of what goes on isn't an argument because it, you have to listen to have a good argument. It's really just loading up your own convenient facts and shooting them back and forth at each other. Cherry picking items that makes your other the other team look bad, regardless of what other what other what the other person is saying. There's certainly not a lot of listening going on in this country. No. There's a lot of there's a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. The the irony of that right there is both of us are saying there's a lot of waiting to talk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you're having a discussion with someone and they say something and you don't think about anything they're saying, you're just formulating a, a response to it while they're talking. That, it's not an exchange of ideas. That's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not putting what? it well. I, no, it's just, but, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Speaking of that, though, uh, I wanted to talk, too, because the last time we, since the last time we recorded, Bill Maher dropped his N-bomb on air. And I think we can kind of really just skim over the discussion of whether he should or shouldn't have or he, you know, should be punished in some way. But it, it, it was interesting in some of the response to it. One of the the biggest celebrities that I saw calling for him to be removed from uh, from HBO was Chance the Rapper, and I thought, like, you know, hey, you're welcome to your point. It's well put. You know, me personally, I just wouldn't watch that show. I don't I don't call for anyone to be removed from their job unless they do something really egregious, like, well, I don't know, sexually molest somebody, but. I think anyone who's calling for Bill Maher to be fired doesn't watch his show. Well, yeah, especially, but especially if you I think, happen to be black, like Chance the Rapper, you don't watch Bill Maher because he's on you. Bill Maher's right. fighting for the brothers most of the time. <laughs> I know that's just a euphemism, but you realize that it's kind of offensive to say happens to be black. I mean, he was born yes. that way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know you don't. I know you don't Carlin. mean anything by it. <laughs> No, fans of George Carlin get what I was get what I was doing there. Right. Well, not just so, okay. Here's, uh, well, me, the wait, wait, let lost, me just make oh, one sorry, point though on, on this. It, I think the the better response from somebody like Chance the Rapper would be to go on Bill Maher's show and debate debate him publicly on and hey, even take the the opportunity to publicly admonish him for his choice of word. Isn't that what Ice Cube's going to do? Oh, um, I don't know. I hadn't heard of that. It enlightened me. I just read an article today. It said he's going to be on tomorrow. Oh, great. Well, he's going to be he's going to be on Friday, I should say. And I guess that he now the article 
uh, it was written with some speculation as to what Ice Cube's thinking was and how he would yeah. approach the, the discussion, but apparently they, they tend to believe that he's not thrilled whatsoever with Bill Maher and calling himself a house nigga. So right. I, that's, like I said, that's speculation, but, a, but a, I, multiple sources I've read has said he's going to be on tomorrow. Probably well, on the well, one, then, like a one-on-one interview with Bill Maher. So that just that just proves my point because it, you know if Chance the Rapper would have approached him, they probably would have been open to that too. I think they would have taken Ice Cube over that. Just fits their demo a little better, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, why not go on there and, and talk? It's not like he runs the type of show where they're not going to invite you on if they think there's going to be. If you're if you're going to uh, you know say something bad about the host, he's a big boy. He can take it. Yeah. And, and I, look, all he did he said a word, okay? And you should really be fighting him back with your own words. This fucking oh, this this fucking little baby shit of going to tell mommy every time something doesn't go your fucking way, which is. What really any uh, cry for, uh, um, uh, oh, what's the word, um, calling for a bunch of people to, to boycott. These calls for, for boycotts and advertisers to be pulled and, and people should be fired from their job. Look, the people who <laughs> the people who oversee the people on TV have jobs too. And that's pretty much their job is to say who gets to be on TV. Based, and if you say enough fucked up shit, they're going to pull your ass because they're going to lose viewers, they're going to lose advertisers. But now it's the public's responsibility to make sure that somebody gets fired for something. Instead well, of that, just saying, look, there's a lot of TV out there. There's a lot of opinion shows out there. There's, I'm sure there's one that fits your beliefs and that doesn't challenge them and makes you feel all comfortable so just go fucking watch that and leave us alone well i mean here's here's the bottom line for the people calling for bill maher to be fired for hbo to drop him if hbo dropped him today let's say they released a statement right now as we're on air we are no longer airing real time bill maher has been let go from the network we're separating and ourselves from lose, him yeah he the would 100% be percent lose show, subscribers showtime Netflix, somebody would pick him up within 24 hours. Oh, In yeah. That's what I, thought, I thought you were going with the fact that HBO would definitely lose subscribers by canceling his show and definitely would have n- nothing to gain from it. It's not like all those people were like, oh, yeah, they fired Bill Maher. I'm going to subscribe to HBO now. No, but not yeah, at all. The, your, your point is very valid as well. He's got an audience. And somebody's going to pick his show up. And I think the major problem he ran into... Didn't let it keep him down before. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because, yeah, he, they, he was off the air for, what, a couple months? And that was right. probably just long enough for HBO to hire him and for them to and get... Put a, build a set. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and say, okay, <laughs> what do you want the format of the show to be? You know, right. and they come up with it, boom, and they, they've ran with it now for, what, 13, 14 yeah. seasons? I mean, they, it's an Emmy-winning but, show. Which, I mean, to me, yeah, I'm like, not, I don't really give a fuck about Emmys. But, but, I mean, that means that the industry itself has recognized that, you know, that's a show. That's a critic's well, darling show, for the left at least. Let's also keep in mind that Bill Maher is rich and he's white, so he only fails up. <laughs> Unless so, you get I don't, fucking a kid. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know where you go up from HBO, honestly, but maybe, even just a lateral move would be the same. Well, I think the thing that gets... that that, that has fucked him in the court of public opinion is that I don't think a lot of people see Bill Maher as a comedian anymore. They see him as a political pundit. Right. And I mean, I, I wrote a post about it and the comedians just off the top of my head that I said, if you're offended by Bill Maher using that word, then you, then you better be equally offended by Louis C.K., Bill Hicks, Lenny Bruce, George Carlin, Neil Brennan, and Doug Stanhope using that word. And that's just off the top of my head. Yeah. And, be, but people will go, oh, but they're com- they're comedians. Well, a comedian's job is to push boundaries. Some hit the mark, some fall flat. I'm always going to side with 
defending, not necessarily what they say or the joke itself, but the attempt. Yes. 100% right? rich. And, I mean, Patrice O'Neill was on Fox News about 10 years ago, and he, and he debated uh, this president of the National Organization of Women about uh, something that Opie and Anthony did. One of the many things. I can't remember specifically which one. And it's basically Wait, they said okay. something bad about women? Pay- oh, no, it was a homeless man said he wanted to uh, rape Hillary Clinton or something, and they aired it. I don't know. This yeah. is when they were on Sirius, so it has to be post-2005, I think. But, I mean, he, he, he basically broke it down like that. He's like, I'm not defending what they said. I'm defending their attempt to be funny. If it's not funny, then it's not funny. But it's a joke. It's not like mm-hmm. they went out there and grabbed a homeless person and threw him in a room with, Mich- with uh, Hillary Clinton and said, okay, now attempt to rape her, and we're going to make that a bit. Right. And Well... Well, if you can justify that, then you can just say whatever, and if somebody calls you on, you just say you're joking. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> Playing the that, dipshit that goes advocate to, over here. <laughs> but No, no, I understand, but that also goes back to something I was going to say earlier, which is we've become a very much a pussy passive-aggressive society when it comes to shit like that, because we'll say something without explicitly stating it, and then when someone calls you on it, you go, show me exactly where I said those words. You know what you meant with the intent that you said it in. And that's, once again, the, the context of what he was saying it in was he was, to me, this is, this is, this is exactly what I thought when, was it Ben Sassi? Was that the senator's name? I can't remember. Sass. It doesn't matter. But, Sass, yeah. Sass, okay. When, when he said, we'd love to have you work in the fields with us, the first thing I thought is, Dude, do you not realize <laughs> how that sounds? <laughs> right. That sounds like, I mean, it sounds like something that you'd say, like, in the 1800s, you know, like, come work the fields. Right. It sounds us. bad. Hey, and, come on, work the field. It, and he I didn't say, a, hey, he didn't say hire him to work no. the fields, did he? <laughs> I no. think the slavery part was implied by Mr. Ben Sass. <laughs> <laughs> he should take but, some of this blame. But, I mean, I actually had a person say, well, you know, most white people have no idea what the meaning of, you know, a house Negro is. And I'm like, who the fuck does Every, – everybody I talked to, I was like, okay, the minute you heard that senator say that, what did you think? And they were like, I kind of – he was calling him a field Negro. And That's I'm like – roots? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so don't, don't, don't sit here and tell me that, you know, oh, no one thinks like that. Come on, man. We – dude – one of, one of Malcolm X's most famous TV appearances is where he broke down the mentality of the difference of the mentality in the in historically in in the field Negroes and the house Negroes, and that's those are his exact words. All right, yeah. and I mean, so that isn't that long ago. You can't tell me that I understand that that we 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 have a problem with remembering history because we just keep repeating it. But there are a lot of people that that know history and know what that came off as. And Bill Maher was just, to me, it was so absurd for the senator to say that he was firing back with something equally absurd. Right. I mean, obviously the senator didn't mean come work the fields for free, but it's how it came off, and yeah. I got to chuckle yeah. out of it. And then after I chuckled, I think the minute, the, mini- well, <laughs> the minute I got done chuckling, I thought, oh, shit. I wonder how much shit he's going to get for this one. Because it's not the first time. I remember on Politically Incorrect, he had Sarah Silverman on, and the subject come up of race and comedy. Yeah. And Bill Maher did something that I think took a lot of guts. And I think is going back to what I said to where we can't have honest conversations anymore because people go, I'm offended and I, I, you hurt my feelings. He said, look. We're all grown adults sitting here talking about race as it relates to comedy. Why are we sitting here like children talking about the N-word? We all know what that word means. If I'm quoting somebody or if I'm quoting a a, a bit that that someone like Richard Pryor did, why do I have to talk like a child because your feelings are going to get hurt because it came out of my mouth? But it didn't bother you when it came out of Richard Pryor's mouth. In fact, you laughed. It's ridiculous. It's impossible to have an honest conversation if we're already going into the conversation taking words 
and the ability to use them away from people. And that is, that is one of the things that irritates the shit out of me about the left these days is that weren't you guys supposed to be the party of free speech? Weren't you supposed to, weren't you defending it? Weren't you marching for it in Berkeley 40, 50 years ago, whatever it's been? Now it's like it's, everything's flipped on its head. No, you can't. Nobody understands that. Nobody fucking. I don't even know. I, the, I told you. The all you need context are dead. And more proof of that was fucking Al Franking. Franking? Al Franken bailing on, his, on Bill Maher's show this week. Like, what the f- you, you were You were a head writer on Saturday Night Live. What the fuck? Well, exactly. You know, I'll, I'll defend Al Franken on this, though, because he was a comedian. And he is now a politician, and he's got a job to do. And it, it, I think it's not so much about, like, well, that, that scraps it. I can't go on Bill Maher's show anymore. This was the week after he has this controversy, and I, I think he had to look, I think Al Franken had to look at what he had to gain versus what he possibly had to lose. Well, I think. Yeah, and since he is a politician, he has to play the political game. And with what right, that's, Chris, what what Chris just said, with his past being a comedy writer, there's I don't think I think he's smart enough to realize there's no way he's going to go on there and argue against Bill Maher's right to attempt a joke, no matter if it falls no, flat or has, not. Yeah, because he has no position, gonna, no winning position on that. Yeah, there's no way he's going to come out looking good. Because it's going to be well. Wait a minute. Right. You wrote for Saturday Night Live, you know the whole you know the the same show that had the skit with Chevy Chase and Richard Pryor calling each other racial slurs for five minutes in a mock job interview. Right. So you're hey, right. Stuart Smalley, tell us why Bill Maher can't say that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It's a no win. It's a no win situation for him. So from, for, it's a very crafty way of going about covering his ass, but ultimately it's a cover his ass move. Do I blame well, him for it? No, I don't. Not in today's political climate. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, too. I mean, I didn't hear any comments from him, like, admonishing Bill Maher. No, he did it. The, he, he, oh, no, he, he, pulled, he said it was, like, inappropriate and, and uncalled for. I try to find what he said. Yeah, but Actually, even if he but, said that, that's not that strong, man. I mean, I've... Yeah, I've no, read, that's... That's not an admonishment of saying, like, Bill Maher is a horrible person and his show should be pulled from HBO. I mean, that's admitting... uh, You're stating what Bill Maher did and the controversy around it, and that's why you don't want to be on his show. It's just a political move. I I don't know who he's going to have on his show. Actually... I don't know. Is it coming up this week? He's having Milo Yiannopoulos back. Oh, I'm sure if it was this he's week, he's invited him back. I saw that. News. Right. So I, I know he's invited him back. So maybe it's him and I and uh, Ice Cube. I'm not sure who else is going to be on there. I'd be surprised to see any other politicians, but who knows? Let's see. Uh. uh Okay, it says, yeah, Ice Cube 2, this is via the LA Times to appear on first episode of Real Time with Bill Maher in the wake of racial slur. (laughs) Post Uh, and bomb. (laughs) Year zero for his show again. You got to start the clock over again. This is the new era of Bill Maher. Ice Cube is scheduled to be the mid show interview guest by Michael Eric Dyson. Who had a notably mixed response to Mars use of the slur will drop on uh, will be the top of the show interview. Also scheduled are David Gregory, former Republican representative David Jolly of Florida, and activist Simone Sanders. So if I my told you, I on, joked about it on the Weedsman. Fucking don't tell me I'm not right, dude. He's pr- here comes Bill Maher and his five black friends for the whole show. No, I love black people. Like it's literally, it's that's going to be an all black panel, isn't it? Like every person on the show is going to be black. I, but see, I, I, I get where you're coming from, man. That? But that's an un, that's an unfair <laughs> shot. Black Friday, book, he's had all black panels before. He had. Yeah, he yeah, had. But now this seems predictable and overcompensating. Well, whatever. Was it predictable I mean, and overcompensating when he had Cornell West and Most Def on? And yeah. it, it, it was his panel. But it wasn't after was he got a 
accused of it wasn't after he dropped the end bomb. That's what I'm saying. Like, right, but this isn't like he has no black friends, and all of a sudden now he's parading around some black friends because he got saying the n caught, caught saying the n word. No, but this still seems like the hey, I got black friends move. Like it's just, oh, so it kind of comes off. We'll, we'll see, I guess. I mean, if Ice Cube goes on, first of all, this is. This is my feeling. If Ice Cube goes on there and starts fucking talking a bunch of shit about how no one should use that word, then he oh, better well. very quickly in his next breath explain how the fuck he was in NWA. And and I remember his rap career. Remember, kids, he's not just the guy that makes family movies. Just because that's where you know him from, he actually had a career as, as, a, as a gangster rapper, and he dropped the word right. every fucking chance he could at one point in his life. Well, so he better the fucking title, the name of his band. The name, yeah, it That's doesn't stand for Northwest Airlines. Yeah, it's not nutty wacky artist. I mean, so yeah, it, he he better fucking if he's gonna say well that that, that word's horrible. He better than in the next breath say and I used to use it and I was wrong because if not, I'm just gonna look at him and go, okay, you're a fucking hypocrite. And that's that's one to me. That's mm-mm, that's that's. That's almost the unforgivable sin in my mind these days. Don't get up there and fucking be hypocritical and pick and choose what you're going to be offended about and what you're not going to be offended about. Because yeah. if you're able to pick and choose what you're offended about, then you're not really offended. Offense is something that happens. It's an, it's it's a it's a, it's a, a reaction. It's a reflex. Yes, it's not something yeah. like, hmm, am I offended about this? I don't know. Who said it? Was it, well, Bill O'Reilly said it. Then I'm offended. Did Bill Maher say it? Well, then I'm not offended. Bullshit. All right? right, and and it's and it's and I'll. That's where I agree with people on the right who say, well, "What happened if it had been Bill O'Reilly?" I've been like, oh, "Yeah, you're right. They're absolutely right. There'd have been a lot more hell to pay because of whose mouth it was coming out of." That's. I, I don't see how anyone can even argue with that. But there's a any well, here's the any main celebrity. He, they're not. He, Bill O'Reilly's not a comedian. But then again, like I right. said, I think it fucks Bill Maher that so many people don't even see him as a comedian. They see him as a pundit. And that's where I think he's he's getting the heat for it. Because <clears throat> you, we can't argue that Louis C.K. and George Carlin aren't known in the, in the public consciousness. Okay, those are two very well-known comedians who've used that word on stage, have built entire bits around that word. And you can argue... That, Doug Stanhope had a great <laughs> response when someone asked him about it. They said, well, how do you feel about the Bill Maher situation? And he said, you know what I feel? No one ever asked me to apologize. It's because no one knows who the fuck I am. And it's pretty <laughs> much it's, it's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. you know, no one goes up to Louis C.K. and is like, oh, man, that, that bit, you, you, you know, you've used the word nigger. We got to, man, we got to take that off your albums, off of future pressings. And and no one told Joe called George Carlin a racist for saying the word. It, look, words words are just words. When someone says something, if I'm talking to somebody and they use every slur for a white person in a conversation about race without calling anybody that, without using it with hateful intent, I think you would be stupid to, to be offended by that. You're having a discussion about these words. What now? Like, once again, we have to use baby talk. What are we going to start spelling them out to each other? That way, you know, we don't offend people. I mean, we've already there's basically a moratorium in this country that you can't <laughs> say the word. You have to say n bomb or n word. And that is ridiculous. It is fucking ridiculous. And I mean, I'm not advocating for its use every day, willy nilly. But at the same time, it, really, you're that weak to a word offends you? Really? Like, 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 like hearing the word, not used at you, not used in a derogatory sense towards a whole group of people. Just hearing the very word offends you that bad? I don't buy it, dude. It's manufactured outrage. It's I'm supposed to feel outraged or I'm choosing to feel outraged. I'm choosing, once again, choosing to be offended. And if, God damn it, if you choose to be offended, you're not really offended. Sorry, right? You're playing a well, you're, if I, you're it, playing a game, right? If I never listened to any of a comedian's material, and then somebody told me that uh, that he had a joke that said, "Please, I'm a house nigger," I would say, "Oh, that sounds like a pretty horrible comedian." 
Yeah. If that's the one representation that you have of, of their work, which I think that's a, the case in, in, with a lot of these people. Again, these aren't Bill Maher watchers that are, I mean, who knows? I'm sure there's a handful of people out there who turned that off immediately and was like, I'm never watching Bill Maher again. Mm, I'm, but, yeah, I'm sure uh, there, not, there were. But, but that's a very, very small minority. Ultimately, HBO is not going to lose any money over this deal. And I mean, so, the, so in it, the argument. So the if argument, that's all that you heard, you don't know. You don't watch Bill Maher, and then you read a story where you you read about this joke that he used, and you said that's an offensive joke. Okay, well that that's fine. That can be an offensive joke. Jokes can be offensive. Um, but take that within the whole body of the man's work and understand. I mean, I a lot of the outrage was simply. He used that word. There wasn't a lot of serious outrage of people saying he's a racist. So if he's Kathy not a Griffin racist, was pretty juice that he did it. Right. If he's not a racist and he uses that word, what's the meaning behind it? It seems pretty clear. Now, I don't know. There, there's so much gray area in there. I mean, I know that, that we're oversimplifying this, and you can easily pick it apart. But the fact that we acknowledge but, there's gray area there puts us, and I mean, I hate to say it because it's going to sound like I'm like getting a couple ribs removed so I can fold myself in half and blow myself, but I'm really not. I'm just being honest. The fact that we're sitting here having this discussion, admitting and acknowledging the gray area puts us light years ahead of a lot of people who see everything as black and white in this world, and it's not, folks. Yeah. The world isn't black and white. The world isn't right and left, up and down. That's not, there's not only two answers to everything. And just like, okay, I, you know what You know what bothers me most about the whole situation? The fact that he come out and apologized. Now, I don't know if, the, if HBO, someone at HBO yeah. sat him down and said, you better apologize for this. Or yeah, I wasn't a fan of that either. If he apologized because he wanted to, because once again, so I am not a hypocrite. He's coming off as awful hypocritical because he, he has savage comedians who come out and apologize for for offending people, quote unquote, with their act. And he just had a great rant this season about stop well, apologizing. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it, the only thing I can really defend him on the apology would be that this was an offhand comment. This was an off the cuff joke. You know, it, it's not like he was putting together a set and that was one of the jokes in it that he worked really hard on. If you watch the it, actual and it, and footage it flopped, of it. And, it, and it flops, and then he's like, oh, well, I'm sorry for that horrible joke. I'd be like, no, motherfucker, you're not sorry. You thought it would work. You thought it would be funny, and it wasn't. But in this case, well, it was just like, hey, that popped into his brain. He said it. And he's like, eh, I guess I shouldn't have said it because, you know, it pissed off a lot of people that are now talking about this dumb shit instead of the real fucked up issues that are going on in the world that he would rather talk about. It, does he want to have a whole panel discussion about his use of the word nigger? Fuck no. No. There's way more important shit going on in this world that he wants to talk about on his show. And something I will say about Bill Maher that I think a lot of people, especially his detractors, don't give him credit for, is he, for... Dipping his toe is, uh, well, not even his toe. <laughs> He's pretty much up to his waist in the fucking political waters. For a guy who who is that deep into the political waters, he will have people on and give them a platform to basically plead for a second chance. I remember he had Anthony Weiner on. He invited. He's, well, he's having he, Milo back. <laughs> yeah, he invited Ted Haggard on. I think Ted Haggard turned him down. But, I mean, it, it, and, and from all all over the political spectrum. He'll have people, he, he is a believer in giving people a second chance, giving people a chance to explain themselves instead of just condemning them and trying them and convicting them in absentia without even hearing from them. And right. Yeah, even, well, look at, at Milo as an example. You know, he pulled him on because, I mean, like everybody else, he was reading these stories about this crazy shit that was coming out of this guy's mouth. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the things that Milo said were personally offensive to Bill. But that wasn't a reason not to have him on. As a matter of fact, there was a reason to have him on so he could actually talk to him about 
what what are you getting at? Like, what is this guy's bigger message? What? And ultimately, I think what he found and what most people found is that there's really not much there. And, you know, having Milo back on the show, it's whatever. I think I've heard enough out of the guy. I, Milo I, is interesting to me in the, in the for reasons that he probably wouldn't want f- me to be interested in him for. And because he is, he's a half-assed political pundit who wants to be mm-hmm. a comedian, but is really just an internet troll. Right. He just, I truly believe he says shit just to get a rise out of people. Him and yeah, Gavin uh, McInnes are, 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 are I, they're, they run neck and neck in my mind. Whenever I watch one of their videos or I watch an interview with them, they just say shit just to fucking, like a comedian would, to push boundaries, but then they, they're like, but I'm a political pundit. Well, you want to be a comedian. You just don't have the balls to get up and stand up in front of a crowd with a mic. But really, ultimately, what you are is the guy on the, the, the contrarian on the Internet going against and trying to piss off everybody, as many people as you can, because you get off on it. Right. That's really, no, that's if, really all it is. If I'm Milo is smart. By the, the gay conservative. Uh, that always fascinates me when I hear those people like, what? How, but, how are you? How do you exist? How do you not wake up in the morning and just evaporate because you're a giant contradiction? Uh, but I think me, if Milo like is wreck. smart... Kind of thing. It, I think if Milo was smart, he would have just hired somebody really funny to help him write a set and put all of his crazy ideas into a one man show. And then people could laugh at him with some defense of, like, well, you know, he was just joking about that or whatever. You know, they, they, could, they, they could pick it apart and, and say, well, what he said about, you know, this and that is true, but these other things that I don't agree with, well, he was just joking. He turned him into, like, but, the new version of that Mark Russell guy? Yeah. So, hey, speaking of slavery, oh, why why are we talking we about... Uh, well, yeah, that... <laughs> Do I need to run you back the last half hour of the show? <laughs> it was all based no. on a joke about slavery. <laughs> <laughs> um. Again, I'm in Oregon. The, Sorry. Okay. Let's go over segues next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and how they work. <laughs> so I uh, I just I'm puzzled why we're talking about Hillary Clinton and the fact that she quote unquote owned slaves, which is not really what happened. But Wait, we're what? also talking you, you didn't hear about this? She had um, no. She had prisoners work on her, uh, basically do her lawn and lawn and gardening shit uh, for no pay. Hey, that's that is fiscally conservative. All right, I can get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I'm interested more in why why we're talking about this at all. Like this is news because this is. Very old news. I mean, maybe just nobody remembers it, but it's kind of funny that we're that this is, story is being trotted out now, when also everybody on the right and left just seems to want Hillary to go the fuck away. Were these prisoners being a chance to earn a wage while they did this, perhaps nope. for their commissary account? No. Nope. No. Well, at the same time, you're a prisoner. What the fuck are you gonna do? Hey, you want to go outside and mow this white chick's lawn, or you want to stay inside all day? Yeah, but we've we've ruled that unpaid prison labor is uh, it goes against anyone's human rights. Regardless, you don't lose all of your rights when you become a prisoner. Well, thank well you. I mean, you also don't make you gain wage, one to get so. raped. <laughs> Stabbed. I mean, it's not like it's not like they're paying those guys, you know, even five dollars an hour. When you oh, do no, work in prison, cents. you get you get like yeah, yeah. Maybe I think if you're making twenty five cents, cents an hour, yeah, if you're making twenty five cents an hour, you're doing real good. I'm eating ramen every day. Yeah, but what's worse, <laughs> nothing My fee's brand or new. that? To me, that's more insulting. Like, <laughs> I'd rather say, course. "Fuck you." I'd rather do it for free. Yeah, bro, you ain't never been to prison. You, <laughs> no, you, you wouldn't. really want that commissary? <laughs> you would not. You would not. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I've never been, but I have 
uh, a few friends who have, and they're like, yeah, you, you, you say when you're on the outside, fuck that. But when you get there, you're like, yeah, give me the 25 cents. Put it in my account. <laughs> <laughs> right, you you could just have a guard pop in and flip you a quarter every every hour, and you'd scramble for the fucker. Let's put it this way: if you have two hundred dollars in your bank account right now, you probably go, "God damn, I'm broke." If you had two hundred dollars in your commissary in prison, you're living good <laughs> for prison. That is, I mean, yeah. you know, it, money money is it, 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 it means a different thing in there. You walking up to people like money ramen's on me today. Hey, buy this man a ramen. Well, I mean, okay. When, uh, so when did she, was this? When she was when her and Bill were still in Arkansas. Yeah, they using prisoners then. Yeah. Okay, so they're digging up a story that's at least twenty five years old. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, it's it happened at least twenty five years ago. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember when the first time I had heard about it. It was. Probably a decade ago by now. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, hey, can I, I? I I hate to say this because whatever. I, it, it's going to sound like I'm like some alt right motherfucker. But is she is she getting off on the fact that she lost and and blew a slam dunk of an election, but yet she's still being talked about constantly? I mean, is that? Is 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 that what's going on here? I mean, is she like any news is good news as long as her name is on somebody's lips? Because I I don't know that, that is interesting because I mean, what is her plan for what's next? I mean, pretty much just speaking to her is probably yeah. And so I, mean, so I don't know. At, at this point, it's like all right, we didn't hear this much about Walter Mondale after eighty four. We didn't hear this much about Mike Dukakis after eighty eight. Damn sure haven't heard a whole lot about Carrie since 2004. You kind of get my point. I mean, why yeah. are we still talking about this? You took your shot twice now at the highest elected office in the land and failed both times. Go away. Go enjoy on it, retire, retirement. I don't know what else to tell this woman. Like, honestly, I, people that I, are I wouldn't be her, surprised. No, finish your thought. I was going to say, and people that are attacking her, Stop bringing her the fuck up. You're the people that are keeping her relevant and keeping her in the news. Right. I mean, do, do, yeah. It was, but this goes back to... <laughs> Chris and I kind of experienced this in another podcast. You hate someone, but you can't stop talking about them. What's the easiest thing to do in the world if, if, you, if you don't like someone? To leave them the fuck alone. In fact, wouldn't you want them to disappear into the ether and just go away? Right. I mean... yeah. Love and hate are much closer together than apathy. De definitely. I've told people, that's that's a hard lesson for young people to learn, and, and people for all people to learn, but I think young people coming out of relationships, you know, you go, oh, I hate the bitch, you know, she broke my heart. Well, you're not over her if you hate her. You're over her when you don't give a fuck one way or the other. She could live forever right. or die right now and you don't care. The opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. Right. And... I, 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 that's a lesson that obviously some people, a lot of people, haven't learned. So, or even hating people that you've never met, like hating an, uh, I don't know, pop singer. Like, oh, I hate that fucking Ariana Grande. Like, hate her. I just don't give a fuck. But like, you know what's why, funny? There, why? Why would I waste energy hating Ariana Grande? There, there'll be people who defend that, yet say, well, if you hate Jeff Sessions. But you've never met him. Well, that's stupid. But I hate Ariana Grande. Really? Is Ariana Grande trying to lock an entire fucking group of people up because they smoke a plant? No. Right. I think I have more valid reason to hate a guy like Jeff Sessions than I do a no, pop but, singer. Who, but Ariana Grande. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, but Ariana Grande soft on terror. Like, who gives a fuck? She's not running for office. Yeah, exactly. This is how this is how Ariana Grande affects my life. When she comes on the radio, I turn it off. Right. That's it. If well, I get pulled over and 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 uh, you know because our Jeff Sessions has declared a new war on marijuana and you know I get popped for marijuana, I can't just go. Well, I'm just going to turn the radio off and he's no longer valid. It, 
he's not relevant anymore. No, it doesn't work that way. So, and on top of it, what's soft on terror? What do you, first of all, what the fuck yeah. you want her to do? You think she's like Gail Gadot, that she was in the Israeli army or some shit? The bitch is like four foot nothing. <laughs> 80 well, pounds soaking wet. Why does Ariana she, Grande she have lot. to be hard on terror? I don't get what yeah. that, well, soft on. Well, she's soft on terror. What does that even mean? Hold on. She's I'll a explain. pop singer. Yeah, no, no, but listen. I mean, we had the, the bombing in Manchester, and there was a lot of, of talk afterwards from Ariana Grande about how, uh, basically how... We, uh, Fighting terrorism is about, you know, going on with your life and fighting the shit with love and, you know, all, all this hippy dippy shit that, you know, may or may not mean anything. But who give, who really gives a shit? Like, she's got an opinion now on it be, because somebody blew up at her concert. I, I don't mean to sound completely dismissive of the incident, but let's get a check on reality here. Like, this just happened to happen to her at her concert. It's not like... She had this, you know, the theme of love for Islam and a terrorist organization targeted her concert because of that. No, they were just looking for a group of, of, of densely packed people and they found one. I, you know, I so, will say this and I guess I'll preface because this is something I did want to bring up on the show. I, I And I'll preface what I'm about to say with this. If we have a bunch of crazy people who our terrorists listening to our podcast, I guess blow me up. Not, not, not Chris and Aaron. Cause this is coming from me. Don't mistake <laughs> what I'm saying for what they're saying. Um, I don't get the left's love affair with Islam. I don't, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense on any level because they well, savage, the, they savage Christianity for being homophobic, for being sexist, for being violent, for being closed-minded. Are you telling me that even the most, uh, that Saudi Arabia is more liberal on those issues, that the Muslims in Saudi Arabia are more liberal on those issues than the than, than the Christians here in America are? Because right, last where time women checked, can't show their faces or drive cars. Yeah, last time I checked, Christians aren't taking gays to the top of the fucking building and throwing them off. They're not making women cover themselves head to toe under threat of violence, they're not chopping off their clitorises at seven years old, being not held all. down. No, and not okay. Not, not all of them are doing that. <laughs> exactly. But here's the deal. Uh, my, my my mom doesn't have to ask me to drive a car if, if my dad passes away. Like <laughs> right? Yeah. No, he's yeah. That's real. Yeah, I was listening. Yeah, to they have to ask like today. the oldest male son for permission to do shit. There's a woman, she, had since, she, she has since moved to uh, Australia with her husband, but she grew up in Saudi Arabia, and she, she, I guess she lived on some weird compound that I, I don't know the details of it. Basically, it was, so, it was considered sovereign land, and the Sharia laws uh, that ruled the rest of Saudi Arabia didn't apply in this little section. And she had learned to drive in the U.S., so she would drive around the compound. And in protest, she started driving out into the rest of Saudi Arabia and actually got arrested for that. But she was talking there about how every woman has to have a guardian. And that guardian is your father until you get married. And then if your husband dies or you separate, your guardianship then transfers back to the father. If not, then it goes to uh, a brother. If there's no brothers, it's your son, your own fucking son. As long as he's oh. over eight, as long as he's eighteen or older, is the one who tells you when you go out and leave the house to go get groceries, what you can and cannot do, how you should dress. Nothing makes me chuckle harder than seeing militant third wave feminists supporting Islam. Because yeah. I'm like, you understand, you wouldn't even have a voice in the houses of these if you grew up in that culture, right? And mm -hmm. and you would if you if you forced people to listen to you if you if you said fuck it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shut up you would be doing so under the threat of very real violence up to your own death right I mean this is this is this is my issue with this these this is a class this is the the one case I can point to on the left and go 
you guys are contrarians. So you chuckle, not, the women you, make you chuckle for me. The gay people make me chuckle that I fight for Islam. Like, really? Like, go try to be gay in an Islamic country. Let me know how that turns out for you. I just, you know, you have, there's, there's a group of feminists in, in Stockholm who are galloping around statues of politicians on horses because they consider them patriarchal. And that's, to, to, to use your expression, Aaron, that's the hill they choose to die on. It must be nice to be able to pick and choose the softest fucking issues to take a stance on. If you are so concerned about women's rights all over the world, why aren't you out there protesting what, how women are treated in Islamic, Islamic dominated countries? Why, right. why, why, is, why, are that, why is that off limits? And your defense of uh, that's a minority of Muslims, or that not all not all Muslims are like that. Well, they didn't all get this idea out of thin air. They didn't get this this vision of uh, of oppressing women in their society just by having group meetings. And you know what? And then the Muslims that uh, aren't like that are ostracized without dropping too many names right uh, the wife's stepfather is muslim and he married a white woman guess whose family doesn't talk to him mm -hmm. he married a western white woman who dares to leave the house without her head covered well, etc there's, etc there's a uh, uh, a poll that just come out that showed that out of all the religions muslims are the most isolated because they have the fewest non-muslim friends and if that was Christians, I mean, we're talking well over 50%. We're talking over the, the majority of Muslims in the U.S. If that was Christians in the U.S., the majority of them going, well, I'm only friends with other Christians. I don't talk to, I'm not friends with non-Christians. There would be such a stink. But this poll comes out and it gets buried in the news because for some reason, they're a protected religion. Look, here's the bottom line that people, if you're honest, they realize this. There is, there are people of faith who are malignant, and there are people of faith who are benign. And if you are a benign practicer of your faith, meaning you worship in your home, you worship in your churches, in your temples, in your mosque, whatever, good for you. You don't try and impose that on anyone else. Exactly. The minute you start to try to impose that on other people, the minute that you start calling for laws to be written according to the tenets of your faith, you are now malignant. What do we do with malignant tumors? We remove them. Right. Okay. I'm sorry that your delusions and your, and your imaginary friends tell you this shit and you choose to believe it. But we have people walking around every day who believe that they were Cleopatra in a past life. As long as they don't try to force us to deal with them on that level, then I don't give a shit. There's people walking around that right. are clinically depressed. And, and it's, it goes back to the Rachel, the, the Rachel Dolzel thing. And I got to kind of apologize to you, Aaron, because when we were talking about it, you said something. And I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't, I didn't stop and actually think about what you said. And given time... I thought about it, and I was like, you're right. For her to walk around and go, I'm a black woman, even though all the facts say that she's not, that's a mental illness on her part. As long as it doesn't affect other people, then there's really nothing to, to be done about it. There's no, no victim, no crime type situation here. She's right. just delusional. She has a mental illness. She needs help. She's to be, I'm not going to, and I'm not saying pitied as in looked down upon. She's to be pitied that, you're so far gone, you don't even realize you need help. You're the person who's truly crazy standing in a crowd going, everyone else is nuts, I'm the only sane one. And that's, some, that's the common thread with people who are, who are very mentally disturbed. They believe they're fine. It's everybody else who's crazy. Everybody else has the problem. They're perfectly fine. Yeah. And well, if that's the case, then most of America is insane. Well, I, th I think it's, I think it's I think it's a safe I think it's a safe assumption according well. to the DSM five that most of America suffers some from some form of mental illness. Right now, but the problem is there's such a stigma attached to that that people go, "I'm not mentally ill. I'm not broken. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing to be ashamed of, man." Think of all the shit you go through as a human being just between birth and eighteen. There's bound to be something that get, that fucks with your head that gives you hang-ups or compulsions 
or whatever. There's no shame in acknowledging them and asking for help. Where the shame should lie is refusing to acknowledge them and asking for help. So I, that's where, like I said, I got to apologize to you because basically that's what you were saying. And I was just so fucking fired up in the moment that I just kind of ignored what you were saying. And I'm sorry for that because that's not fair well, to you. Hey, so, happens. But, I mean, going back to the religion thing, if... I know you're not a big fan of flip the flip the coin over and see how it would work, but that is right now the easiest way to see who's full of shit and who's not. Because once again, if it was Christians doing this shit that these radical Muslims are doing, and granted, yes, I understand, not all Muslims, not all Christians are crazy blowing up the fucking uh, bl- blowing up uh, buildings in Oklahoma City either. But there are a few that are, and you know what? We need to weed them out. They need to be fucking. I'm sorry. You are, you are a cancer upon society. You need to go, see yeah. you, and it, 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 it. Bottom line, it's it's it's. If you are a murderer, if you are a sexual predator, you need to be taken out of society. By I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to. And I'm not going to fucking sugarcoat it because the people they kill and rape. Don't they don't get any sugar coating. They don't they're not sitting there while they're cutting their throat. I'm so sorry, I just have to do this. They're not sitting there while they're holding them down and raping them, going, Ah, you know, are, are, does this feel good to you? Are you enjoying this? I mean, it's it, there's no compassion in what they're doing, and they don't understand yeah. compassion. That's part of their problem. So we have to deal with them on that level. I'm not saying we have to turn into them. I mean, you know, there is a there is a school right. of thought out there well, that if you fight the monsters long enough, you become one. We don't have to do that, though. We can, we've evolved to where we have self-awareness, to where we don't have to be like that. But the, the problem, though, here is that if, when most people argue against, uh, against Islam or Sharia law or whatever, they can't also accept the fact that that doesn't mean, like, I'm anti-Islam. I'm anti-any religion, frankly. They all exactly. suck. Exactly. I'm a religion but, folk. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> I'm Probably. I'm anti-Islam. I'm not I'm not anti-Muslim per se. I'm I don't want to see all Muslims uh, 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 kicked out of this country. You know, I don't I don't want to see Sharia law to spread to America. Certainly, but I don't. I, I can hold the two thoughts in my head that your religion is bad, fucked up, and 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 your society oppresses a lot of its own people, and the fact that there's a lot of a lot of good people that we we want to have in this country as citizens that a lot of them are trying are coming here to get away from all of that shit and look these traditions don't die overnight you know a woman wearing a hijab does is not necessarily oppressed just in 90 percent of the cases i would say <laughs> you know but th- there's a lot of, there's a lot of women who who choose to do that because that's look that's what they're comfortable with that's the culture that they grew up in fine uh, you well, know it's unfortunate it's unfortunate but who am i ultimately to judge well it's like chris said about you know it, someone if, if, if someone of muslim faith marries someone outside of the faith who doesn't adhere to wearing a hijab then here in america the, what's the worst thing they can do he said it they pretty much you're excommunicated from the family they don't talk to you mm-hmm. as horrible as that is that the that bullshit stone age beliefs are tearing apart families it's not we're going to murder you we're going to beat you into submission that's in the in the, in the countries that are ruled by religious laws that is what happens that is yeah. oppression. If I am told I have to wear something under the threat of violence, including up to my own death, I'm being oppressed. And that's bullshit. But here in America, for all our fucking bullshit problems, and we got them, we pick them apart every fucking week, uh, I, I've never seen a Christian family stone one of their own members for wearing cloth made from two separate you know two separate sources you know oh you you man yeah my parents are catholic if i 
Mary, not a Catholic. Like, I'll, I just made Easter weird. That's all that's going to happen. You know, like, it's no big right. deal. Yeah, exactly. If if you eat meat on Fridays, you know, no one's going to stone you. If if a Jewish person eats a slice of bacon, you know, they're not buried up to their head in the, in, in the sand and beaten, you know, or whatever the fuck. I mean, it's that's the point of... Yeah, we have our problems with oppression, with racism, with homophobia, all that good shit. But on the scale of you compare us to the rest of parts, or excuse me, not the rest of the world, other parts of the world, you know, we're pretty benign in that area. I mean, it's just basically people pissing off other people with their opinions. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the city that borders the city I live in, Dearborn, the uh, the highest concentration of Muslims in the US this weekend there's going to be a an anti sharia law protest oh that's going to go awesome right so well let's just examine that i mean anti sharia law yeah it sounds great i'm anti sharia law i'm sure a lot of people are most of america would not like to see any of that shit go down over here but what's the real threat of Sharia law being <laughs> uh, taking control in this country. Next to zero. Not even next to zero. There's so many zeros in front of that number. It's ridiculous. Now, uh, and what's the, what's the real issue here? I mean, you're not protesting because you think Sharia law is going to take over your country. You're ultimately protesting because you think... Muslims in general are going to take over this country just by sheer numbers. And therefore, it's not going to be America anymore. And I mean, it's straight up anti-Muslim groups that are involved in this, this demonstration. Uh, and that's what irks me because I'm, I'm guaranteeing you if certain people listen to the conversation we just had, they'd lump us in with those groups. Mm-hmm. And at no point did I say you don't have a right to practice your religion. I said you don't have a right to force your religion upon others. There's a big right. difference between those two. Right. I mean, if you're really concerned about that, then I think you would all get together and throw a block party and invite all the Muslims. Because that's the only way you're going to fight this shit, is by showing, hey, you're in America. You don't have to live like this. You have freedoms that you en- enjoy in this country that you don't in others. And this idea that they should just go back and live back wherever they came from in the Middle East certainly doesn't make the problem go away it might make you feel better because then you get to drive around town seeing only white people but that's just going to make sure that this oppressive attitude is pervasive throughout the middle east people have less countries to escape to they'll be stuck in that country and stuck in in those ways and probably going to be exporting more terror to other countries well i have so, family members who who have moved from this area, like in the eighties, I believe, and it was the, it had to be the eighties because I grew. I remember, I remember growing up with the like my cousins and stuff. And <clears throat> when they moved, you know, every once in a while they come back and visit. Well, they'll share things on social, you know, media like videos of a guy driving around Dearborn, showing signs in Arabic and going, "This looks like downtown." Baghdad, you know, and, and look what they're doing to our country. And I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, but you're not even here anymore. Do you understand? I, I too live in a city that borders Dearborn. Okay, I've, I drive through Dearborn. I, I shop at businesses owned in Dearborn. I'm not treated any different. Now, I mean, like, here's, I think I would have a horrible time in New York. You, here's the, he would hate right. every you don't, you, fucking inch you don't, of New York. Hey, you don't go into a store and the guy spits on the floor when he sees yeah. you. I mean, and here's where people, the the we need to change, we need to police people's thoughts. This is what might piss them off when they hear me say this. I don't know what the, I don't know what it is said once I leave the store. They might be like, look at that fat American, fuck him. That's fine. You can say whatever the fuck you want about me behind my back because it means you ain't got the balls to say it to my face. But also. They didn't. T- they didn't say well, you're not allowed to shop here. Get out of here. They didn't refuse me service because of it. They didn't. No matter how they feel about me as 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 a fat ass American, they don't. They're not going to act. You know, on that. So, and you can't control what people say about you and think about you. 
So why fucking worry about it? And they're acting like, oh, if you set foot in Dearborn and you're white, I mean, it's fair game. It's like, you know, it's a free fire zone. <laughs> That's right. And I'm like, first of all, you people, you live in Tennessee and Georgia and Texas and Colorado. You don't know shit about this fucking area anymore. You haven't lived here in almost 40 years. Right. Like, they're the ones that, you know, I, I remember the first Man, time I you, talked to you. Use some of, of that co- white privilege of yours to move to a place where there's only white people. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, they're, you know, they're the ones who, you know, I had a, one of my cousins I talked to after, first time I talked to him after 9 11, they were like, oh, so I bet you Dearborn's a war zone. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, I, I heard, you know, they were celebrating in the streets and, and, and threatening, threatening white people and Christians. And I'm like, where are you reading this shit? I live right next door to them. And it, I did not see that. In fact, the next day I went that to That happens like once a week. Dearborn. Tops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've we've cut it down to, it's just it's like football it's just on sundays you know we just we, you know the rest of the days of the week you're, it's, you're safe but i mean it's they believe this shit and it's like you're it, what's worse is okay it's bad enough you believe it now you're trying to you know spread the this bullshit urban legend around and it's just not it's just not true but here's the thing, if they heard, once again, if they'd heard the conversation we just had, they'd be like, oh, they're on our side. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not for running people out of the, the country and make America a Christian country because we've always been a Christian country. No. I, fuck Christianity just as much as fuck Islam. Fuck the Jews. <laughs> fuck the Buddhists. <Right. laughs> fuck everybody. Okay? It, I, it, it, unless you, it's, once again, your religion's like your dick. I don't want to see it unless I ask to. All right, so keep it to yourself, and I'm happy. We're, then we can coexist. You also, know? Well, I, I think well, that, uh, well, I, I, w- I couldn't say that white supremacists in this country are as bad as terrorists from Muslim countries, but they sure do use a lot of the same tactics. They're terrorists themselves, yeah. I well, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would go as far as to call them terrorists, but it does start with this disinformation campaign of... You know, what do you think they, how do you think they start to train a terrorist? They start by telling them how people in the West live and why you should hate them, how they are a front to God or, or whatever, how they have no morals, you know? And it's the same thing that, uh, that, that white supremacists are doing in this country. They paint this horrible picture of what the country's like o- o- overseas and people should just all go back and live in their own countries. I mean, at the end of the day, I think there's there, there's some common ground that that white supremacists and terrorists could could find. Hey, yeah, you stay in your country, and we'll stay in ours. But that's not the way the world works. It hasn't, well, I mean, and it's certainly not going to go back to that. I I would definitely say the the KKK that people think of whenever they hear it brought up. Definitely is a terrorist organization. I mean, they were like like the classic image of the KKK is what lynching black people. If that's yes. not a form of terrorism, I don't know what is. And I mean, when we we start getting this well, is I, the gray yeah. area. This the, this is the gray area of the First Amendment. You know, yeah, they have a right to say what they want, but you don't have a right to fucking call for the killing of people. You don't have a right to incite violence. But you, you do have a right to, no matter how uh, 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 you know, horrible you might think it is, they do have a right to stand up and say, hey, um, I don't believe that blacks and whites should live together. Hmm. Whites should live in their neighborhoods, blacks should live in their neighborhoods, and that should be the end of it. Okay, well, you might be an asshole, but you got a right to be an asshole. And, you know, I, that isn't, I don't know if I, yeah, I agree with you there. I don't know if I call that a, a terrorist thought or action, but it definitely leads to it. It's... It's one of the first steps on the road to becoming one, right? Because that's that's what that's really what it is. You even even like with the IRA and the situation that you know Europe and and has dealt with the whole the whole thing starts with painting dividing people that way you see it as us versus them, and it usually right. starts with antagonistic language. And right. The, the 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 correlation that I was making was that you know, it it all goes back to uh, oh, fuck. I lost it. 
attacking somebody for what they believe or where they were born right that's that that's the similarity between white supremacists and and uh islamic terrorists i agree with that I think well, this it, <laughs> this world would be a lot easier to deal with if we could just get people to be honest when we ask them this question. Why do you hate this group of people? And because well, yeah. nine, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you a bunch of reasons that have they've never had affect them. They've never seen with their own eyes. They've just heard about. Like there's mm-hmm. a reason I'm not a fan of Ohio State Police because I've been fucked with by them every time I've drove through Ohio. And not had an Ohio State plate on there. Right? I've been followed. I've been pulled oh, yeah. over. Oh yeah. Been questioned. What are you doing here? Where are you going? What the fuck do you mean? Where I'm going? I'm going south on 75. I'm heading south. Right. Obviously. What the, the fuck, fuck are you? are a state full of nothing in the middle of the country. You don't think other people are going to just drive through it every once in a while? Exactly. You know, I've my dad being a truck driver. I was with him. It was a Friday. He got pulled over. They gave him a ticket, and he was pissed because it was an unwarranted ticket. The cop was being a fucking dick. And he knew he mm-hmm. could do it because this is what he said to him. Well, if you want, you can keep going and talking to me the way you're talking to, and I'll throw you in jail, and you can sit in, in, in jail till Monday and see the judge. I don't know if your company's going to appreciate their load being left on the side of the road for two days. And so what did right. my dad do? He sucked it up, shut his mouth, went on about his fucking day. But, I mean, that's a valid reason to be like, I don't like this particular group because – and it, and once again, we get we get into the nuance of it. It's not every state cop, but there's enough of them to where this isn't case in point. I said what I said, Aaron. You were like exactly. So obviously, you've had it happen to you. I mean, or you know someone it's happened to. You've you've witnessed it or 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 been party to it in some point. So I mean, that's valid reasons to go. I don't like a group of people. Not. Oh well, I heard, and you know they do. Well, really? Well, have you ever seen it? No. Well, then what are you talking about? You're talking. You're passing on secondhand information. You're playing a game of telephone here. It's what you're doing. And of course, by the time from what originally happened, by the time it hits your ears, it's been changed and exaggerated so much. You're probably getting two percent of the truth and ninety-eight percent bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's it's victim mentality. It's the idea that you know be, people want to vote and 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 inspire action on things that don't affect them, but they won't actually take any action on things that can directly affect them because then that would be taking on some personal responsibility, which goes against their story of being a victim. If I don't have the right job, if I don't drive the right car or live in the right city, if I can't get my shit together... It's because somebody else in this country has taken my shit. And that's another, that's another beef I have with... with it, the, I'm not going to say predominant thoughts. or, or, or the, I have a real problem with people who deny personal responsibility. Or if you even bring up personal responsibility to them, they automatically paint you as some sort of super ultra-conservative who has no compassion for anybody. Look. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Rand over here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, a dirty phrase nowadays. I, I I will be the first to admit that I've ended up in situations in my life where I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, you ended up here because of your own dumb decisions. That happens. And you, the only way to learn from it is to realize, well, I kind of fucking helped the situation to come to pass with my own stupidity or choosing to ignore a problem until it got to be an issue that now is, you know, steam or or snowballed out of control. That's on me. But there's also sometimes, sometimes shit just happens. You could do everything right. You could be the best person and, and good, you know, father, good, whatever. And boom, you know, a truck behind you loses its brakes, runs you over and kills you. Life's not fair. Right. And, I, they're not mutually exclusive. Personal responsibility and life not being fair, it's not all or nothing for either of them. It's a big, you know, it's a big gumbo of of all that. And it, it just irritates me that anytime, even at work, I bring up personal, you know, people like not trying to pass the buck or it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's the first thing I hear. It's not my fault. How the fuck is this not your fault? Did you ring the guy up wrong? 
Did you give the guy change the wrong change back? Is your drawer now short because you, the only person working the drawer, made a mistake? Well, it's not my fault. I I had a lot of customers. Well, then you know what you do. You it's 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 shitty to do to a customer, but you make them wait an extra thirty seconds to make sure you get it right. That's mm-hmm. what you do. You learn from the mistake you made and you move on. It's not the end of the world. Well, I I remember there was a company that I worked for. I was a, a manager for and. There was uh, an accusation made against me that I was sleeping with an employee. And my, my direct boss and his boss had to have a sit down with me and, and talk this out. And I told them that it was complete bullshit and that it wasn't happening. And we had a discussion about it and they seemed satisfied with it. And at the end, I, uh, the, the regional manager, not my direct boss, my boss's boss said, okay, well, so what did you do wrong? I said, I didn't do anything wrong. He's like, no, you did something wrong. And I'm like, no, like, you don't believe, I swear I didn't do this. He's like, no, we believe you. You're not sleeping with this person. But what did you do wrong? And I couldn't come up with that at the time because I think I'm more mature now than I, than I was then. And he had to kind of lay it out for me. Here's what you did wrong. You in, created a situation where people thought that you were sleeping with this employee, right? So let's look at your behavior. How close are you to this person? How much do you talk to them? What are you like when you talk to them? You know, ultimately, there's some situations where maybe you're going to be accused of something that you had nothing to do with, and there's nothing that you could do in your behavior to change that. But there's still something to be gained by looking at that situation and say, okay, well, how can I avoid this in the future? How can I avoid wasting my time and my boss's time with uh with with uh, with biased accusations by simply changing the way I conduct myself you know was I flirtatious maybe with this person oh, this is an attractive woman I'm flirtatious with all of them <laughs> it, so, Aaron's the Jared of the podcast this guy fox <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know I, I had to reel that in to fight my nature. So yeah, I mean there was there was personal responsibility that I had to take, even though I didn't directly do anything in ro- in wrong in that situation. Well, exactly, and and this is whew, <laughs> I'm really gonna piss somebody off who's listening. I guarantee it. It's it's along the lines of when I hear like people say, you know, well. If you're a single woman in a big city, you know, why don't you take a self-defense class? And they automatically go, stop victim blaming. It's not my fault that I was attacked or I was raped. No one's saying it's your fault. Mm. There's a difference between assigning the blame to you for being raped or assaulted and saying... And you live in the hood. And saying, hey, why don't you take measures to deter people from fucking doing that? That's, or, to, that's or to protect yourself from people doing that. Because it, it, that's, that's part of the mentality, the, the it's all or nothing mentality we have now. Everything's victim shaming. If you go, you know, well, what, what happened when you got robbed? Well, you know, I was, uh, I was on the east side of Detroit, at, you know, at the, at, the, at the Murder Donald's on Joy Road. And I flashed a couple hundred dollar bills when I pulled my money out of my pocket to fucking pay for it. You probably shouldn't have done that, dumbass, because you just painted a big target on yourself. Right. Now. I, now, is that saying that they deserve to be robbed? No. That's right. saying you de- you're dealing with the reality of your surroundings. Right. No, Rich, it, it, the, I was thinking about this this week so much, actually, because and I'm, I, I'm positive I'm going to get myself into some hot water here. And hopefully I can explain this in a reasonable way. But hearing the testimony in the Bill Cosby case, it was kind of driving me nuts because, you know, like, do I believe that that he not only did what he's being accused of, but that it was rape, that he did assault these women? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I don't know for a fact, but that's the feeling that I have on this. And hearing the stories, hearing some of the, like, there's testimony from one of his victims that, I mean, hearing it just gave me chills. It was just disturbing to think about it. Hear this description of 
being drugged and being like I mean, she was still like half awake and he's fondling her and shit and sticking his fingers in her pussy like and there's nothing that she could do. It wasn't like she was out completely. Yeah, it was almost like she was uh, under anesthetic and couldn't move, but was conscious of her surroundings. That's like a nightmare scenario to me and probably any person. Yeah. But here's the other part That's like sleep paralysis nightmare type shit. Right. Here's the other part of the story. And I'm going to talk about this with the understanding that this person was definitely a victim and they were violated. But I, I wish that this would be a chance for... and. I see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mansplain this. <laughs> and I mean, if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to have to go for it. <laughs> you Women know what mansplaining talk- leads to, though? It leads to complaining. So go ahead. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> oh, God, that's horrible. <laughs> that's great. Uh, women need <laughs> to look at this ca- as a case study and go, okay, she was victimized, but what the f- fuck did she do wrong in this situation as well because this is a woman this isn't like i met bill cosby and invited me over and he drugged me and raped me this was going to his house multiple times hanging out with him one-on-one drinking with him sitting by the fire i'm not saying that this is not an asking for it situation this is understanding your situation because a, you you're hanging out with a much older married man who at one point tries to kiss this woman and she rebukes her and says, oh, you know, I, I think the quote was, that's not what I'm here for. Okay, so you, you set your boundaries and then that was clear what your relationship was, that he was, wasn't going to try and take it any farther. It, uh, I guess what drove you me nuts is that... You knew bought that shirt? No. no <laughs> I think that's kind of no. what you're getting... Yeah. No, it is not. It is 100% not what I'm getting at. I'm not getting at that she put on a sexy dress and went over no, there. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're Charlie talking Murphy about, talking about, was, you knew where you bought that shirt. And it wasn't the men's department. When he was I, I, like I, I, I know your reference. Settle okay. down. Yes. But <laughs> that, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is... Situational you, awareness. Are you... you are you, uh, you either lying to yourself or you're just way too naive to not think that there is some ulterior motive from this person? I understand that this is the a game of stupid or liar with big, yourself. Big celebrity, America's dad, you know, never thought he would do anything like this type of situation. You feel like you're safe with this person, I guess. But it, it, it's kind of like the, hearing the stories in the Michael Jackson cases. What not what in this case not what were the kids thinking? But what the fuck were the parents thinking? You got to be lying to yourself on a certain level to think that all of this is just innocent. And I mean, does anyone think that uh, you know that you're going to be drugged and taken advantage of? Well, no, that's not. And furthermore, it doesn't just because you're naive and you and your naivete puts you in a situation that leads to that doesn't mean that you were fucking asking for it or deserved it. You, I, it right. I mean, yes. that's the, the, I understand what you're saying. The problem is the people who are going to get angry are going to confuse, probably on, probably willfully act dumb and go, although you're saying that. No, that's not what you're saying. Right. I think, well, it's I think because crit- this is the type of, this is the type of th- arguments that the, the Bill Cosby's lawyers are going to use. Well, you the know? one thing that he said that, that his lawyer said that looking to create reasonable doubt a 53 minute phone call initiated by you like or no what was it a 40 minute phone call that was like one of 53 uh, I mean, there's a yeah, reasonable I think, doubt I think that's correct right here's, after here's the, the incident I mean they're they're throwing whatever they can which is which is it's a it's a shit job I couldn't do it I couldn't be a criminal defense attorney unless yeah. like I'd be the most picky one I'd starve because I couldn't take just anybody but it's their job to do this. It's to throw anything at the wall and see what sticks because they're even trying to throw out there that it was a consensual relationship and she's a right. lesbian. I mean, you're barking up <laughs> the wrong tree, guys. <laughs> right. You know. Right. So I don't, I don't buy that consensual relationship or she knew what she wanted or, you know, it, that this was just some sort of misunderstanding. But 
I, I don't buy any of that shit. No. But I also don't. I also don't buy that you didn't want anything. You know, because I, I don't. This person didn't come off as like naive or stupid. Like I don't know. I guess I I've just seen it my whole life and it pisses me off. I've even had I've even I've had girlfriends that would like hang out with other guys, and honestly think that like what it's nothing. Well, I can't have guy friends. And then sure <laughs> enough, he makes some weird move and they come back. Oh, oh so so and so uh, tried to sleep with me. I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. I'm like, well, what the fuck did you think? Like, yeah, have guy friends. That's fine. I don't think you always know how to identify your guy friends. This and that separate of, them from the guys who just want to sleep with you. That that's the type. There's a narrative going around now and with the younger crowd that there's no such thing as the friend zone. That the friend zone is an invention of so-called nice guys who truly aren't nice. They're just being. They're, they're, they're acting nice towards a woman just because they want to get in their pants. And so there's no such thing as the friend zone. And I'm like, okay, so you're telling me that there's never in the history of fucking male-female relationships been a woman who has a male friend who she has no interest in sexually but gets tons of attention from. He's an attentive listener because he is has genuine feelings. Because that's the other thing, they're 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 framing it as there's no genuine feelings of of love or affection from the guy. It's all about sex. So you're telling right. me that if it's all about okay, let me tell you something, ladies. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret for most guys, not all guys, most guys. If we want to fuck you, there's a, there's a amount of work that we'll put in, but there's also a ceiling, a a salary cap, if you will, to the amount of work we will put in. And once we hit that, we realize no matter what we do, we're not going. And if, if it's just about sex, this is what I'm saying. If it's just about sex, once we reach that limit, we're gone. We're on to the next one. If a guy sit there, if, if he's sitting there and he puts up with you using him as an emotional tampon and you're talking to him about all your fucking issues with all your different boyfriends and shit and he's buying you gifts and stuff, guess what? It might be misplaced affection. It might be a very immature love or whatever you want to call it, puppy love or whatever, but it's more than just wanting to fuck you. There is a difference there, and there and there's a narrative and agenda being pushed that there is no such thing as the friend zone because the only reason guys would be nice to you is because they want you for sex, and a woman's completely innocent in that. That's bullshit. I've known women who have... This is the beauty of being me. Because I'm a fat ass... There's certain women who look at me and I'm automatically off the fucking, I'm off of their list of potential fuck buddies because I'm mm -hmm. fat. And right. so they treat me as a non-sexual being. They, they're just brutally honest in front of me. And right. they'll be like, oh, God, yeah, I've got dick under glass all over the place. I let my man, sometimes that's how I, that's how I keep my man in line. I let him know, oh, I can go get some dick right now. You better fucking correct that look on your face. I've, those are that is a direct quote. Jesus, <laughs> and and then if you paraphrase, yeah, she sounds it, lovely. Yeah, huh. <laughs> I'm not saying these are good people. I'm just saying these are people I've known, and I, I'm just like, okay, th this is we th once again we can't have an honest conversation because people are going to go. It hurts my feelings. Fuck your feelings. We need to be truthful because that's the only way we're going to get past this bullshit right. and. I, 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 when it, look, Bill Cosby is a very sick man, and I say that in the sense of mentally ill and sick as in disgusting. There, he, there is something wrong with him. I don't know if, he, yes. if it's nature or nurture, but somewhere his wires got crossed. His, if, they, if, if, if our bodies, if we had little technicians in our bodies that were doing, overseeing the wiring, his should have been fired long ago. And that man right. needs to spend the rest of his life in prison. But he right. didn't Bottom get away line. with this shit. With, I'm sure he tried it on other females, and they were like, what the fuck? I'm not coming over to your house for drinks. You're married, and you're like 70. Exactly. Get the fuck out of here. You know? And that was the end of it, right? He didn't then follow them and then sneak up behind them in the parking lot and inject them with the needle and drag them into his car so he could molest them. That was it. He took advantage of the people that let 
them. And if you really want to fight predators like Bill Cosby, then you've got to start changing women's mindsets because you're, you're not going to eradicate the world of predators. You could only make yourself better at hiding from them <laughs> or countering them. Not even them. hiding from them. Not even hiding Should from them. Or, Carl Weathers, if you're really trying to take out predators. Or, or just avoiding them completely. Yes, being able to identify them and getting away from them as quick as possible. And that is not right. that is not a that is not a female thing. That is not a male thing. That is a survival instinct. That the fact that we've evolved and persisted as a species as long as we have on this planet, we've all had to to fucking at one point in our evolution as, as humans, we had that, and we are we live in real real soft circumstances compared to people even a couple hundred years ago. And it makes it easier for predators because, oh, well, maybe if I go over and I have a couple of drinks with them, it'll further my career a little bit. It'll open some doors, you know. Right. I mean, and here's the thing. Once again, even if even if she, with, with the most self-centered, even if she had the most self-centered intent and she was thinking like that, doesn't mean she deserved what, she, what happened to her. All yeah. right. No, I, is, I hear you. And, but but it needs to be repeated because the people that are listening right now going fuck these guys, they don't they're not hearing us say that they're just here they're they're it's it's like Charlie Brown's teacher want 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 she shouldn't have put herself in that situation want 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 victim blaming that's what right. that's what I guarantee you that's what they're hearing and if you're hearing that then you're you are that you have a problem. And it's your problem to deal with. Fix yourself because that's not what we're saying. I'm not saying it. Aaron, I think you've more than clearly explained yourself. What? Chris, I don't mean to speak for you, but I damn sure don't think you're saying bitch deserved it. So, eh. I've just, depends I, on honestly, the day you ask me. Look, <laughs> this, this does, uh, this issue hits home with me. I know this sounds really weird saying this as a man. And I'm not one of these guys who says that he's a feminist. I don't even know what it means to be a guy and a feminist. But it seems like... All you need is a t-shirt. More... Yeah, right. And a pussy hat. I, I Honestly, most of the women that I've known in my life, I'd say damn near... Well... Let's let's quantify. Mo- I'll, I'll I'll say sixty to seventy percent of the women that I've known have been taken advantage of by a man at some point. It's definitely more than half. And I mean, some of, some of these situations are fucked up, like being raped by family members. Some of it's just being felt up by some dude at a rave. But at I, I don't know. I guess I don't know what else to say about it other than, like, it really does fuck me up to hear stories like this. And the, there's nothing that, just like you, there's nothing that you can do to wipe out terrorism from the face of the earth. You're not going to be able to eradicate sexual predators. And you've got to fucking defend yourselves. And it's as simple as using a little bit of reason because sexual predators look for the weak ones. That's all predators do. That's of, the nature that's, of being a predator. That's part of their right. That's part of their instinct. You know, you're a lion. You chase down a pack of antelope. You're gonna take the go one for, with the lame leg that's fallen behind because they're easy pickings. You're not gonna go for the one that puts up a fight. You're not gonna go for the alpha male because he might just lean over and stab you with one of his antlers. Just like you might try and pinch the ass of some girl at the bar. And she throws a drink in your face, and you're like, she's a cunt, moving on. You pinch that uh, the ass of the girl at the bar, and she just goes, oh. <laughs> kind of nervously laughs it off, like, she's not into it, but she didn't slap me either. Let me keep going. What else can I get away with? Let me nag her a couple of times and see how she reacts. Is it only sexual harassment if you're ugly? What? Oh, it's a different. That's a different. No, no, Aaron, don't don't dismiss it. That's a different subject, but that's true. Difference between sexual harassment and being asked out is if they find you attractive. Oh, especially right. at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be honest no, here. But, no, but but let, 
let's be clear what we're talking about. I'm not talking about all guys. I'm not talking about when I go up and pinch a girl's ass in the bar. I'm talking specifically about sexual predators. It's not. I'm not talking about the difference in perception of you know whether uh, if a guy's uh, if you're okay with the guy hitting on you or not depends on whether you actually like him. Well, yeah, and there's a difference between a guy flirting and asking you out and a guy sexually assaulting you. Yeah. I mean, there's that, that's there's that's you know there's a there's a there's whole continents between those two things, you know. I mean, a guy at work, if he comes up to you and he's kind of flirting with you, and then he asks you out, and you're not interested, and you say, you know, well, you know, I, I'm flattered, but no, thank you, and he moves on and never bothers you again. That's not sexual assault. That's not harassment. I don't care how liberal of a definition you have of harassment. That's not harassment. If he keeps right. coming back, if he's, you know, or if he's, you know, the creepy guy who, like, you know, gets drunk at the Christmas party and comes up to you and goes, hey, you want to come suck my dick in the broom closet? Yeah, that's sexual harassment. And and mm-hmm. as, as, as silly as this is going to sound, like, I think there's a lot of guys that don't realize that they come off as creepy. They just think they're being funny. And that is, in my mind, someone didn't fucking sit those guys down at a young age and explain to them the difference between how you crack jokes and shit with friends and how you crack jokes and goof around with people that you work with, have a professional relationship with, whatever. Because I know a lot of guys who've been never, it never went to HR, it never went to court or anything, but there's, you know, at work, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll talk and tell jokes as if they're in a room full of guys, and a woman will hear it, and she'll be like, oh, God, he sexually harassed me with, with his language. And I'm like, did he really sexually harass you, or did you just hear some shit you would preferred you didn't hear? Let's be honest here. Let's stop the bullshit. Let's stop the politically correct crap where the woman's always a victim and the man's always a, a victimizer. Did he just tell a joke that you didn't find funny and use language in that joke that you found offensive? Because that's not, that's not sexual harassment. Telling a joke that uses the word bitch in it is not the same as me coming up to you and going, do you like your job? Do you want to keep your job? Well, then this is what you're going to have to do to keep your job. You know, it's not a Roger Ailes bra and panty show for prospective on-air talent. That's sexual harassment. But, but we can't, we've been told we can't talk about that and we can't say that because we're men, which is ironic coming from a group of people who claim to want equality and for everybody to be treated equal. But yet, we're not allowed to say this because, well, you don't have the right genitalia. Yeah, but what are you parsing, really? I mean, I don't condone either behavior. What do you mean, what am I I parsing? I I, I know what 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 the words mean, but I don't get the context. Are you saying if someone tells an off-color joke that they shouldn't have? No, well, I'm saying you're you're drawing a line at at what is, is sexual harassment, and I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But, I mean, the things that fall outside of sexual harassment that you're describing, I think, are still inappropriate for the workplace and are the type of things that, while you may not be directly harassing a person, you create an environment that makes it uncomfortable for women to work there. And to that, all I could say is I agree with you, and that's where you need to... And some people are very good at this, and some people are very poor at this. You need to be able to read the room. If you have a personal relationship mm-hmm. with a coworker who's a female, and one on one, when you guys talk, you guys talk raunchy, not sexually raunchy to each other, but just right. talk raunchy to each other, you should have the wherewithal to know that that's a relationship between you and her that you guys are comfortable talking that way. When a third person walks in and you don't know where they stand on it, you don't continue to talk that way amongst right. each other well but if i if i understand the bigger point that you're getting at it's really about uh, appropriate response maybe dial it down a little bit because okay so if an off-color joke or remark that's taken the wrong way offends you you know maybe the appropriate response isn't to go to uh go to your boss and say i want him out of the office because 
I feel like he sexually harassed me. Maybe it's, hey, you know, Jim over there in accounting needs to maybe sit down with the HR person and have a talk about appropriate conversation at work. Oh, definitely. You know, I was pulling this I, dick I think, out at lunch. I think, I think that's an effective response. You know, if the, the guy slaps your ass. Yeah, it, he should probably lose his job. Uh, there's no, in my mind, there's no probably about it. Yeah. He should lose his job. I mean, that's, I don't care if you're a woman doing it to a guy or a guy doing it to right. a woman. Even if, even if you work with like your significant other, if you're, unless you're alone together and you, you know, you give each, you know, one of you gives us a playful little, you know, tap on the ass, the other one, that's fine. You don't go out in front of, in the, in the middle of a, of a board meeting and do it to each other. <laughs> you know, I personally think that all baseball coaches should be fired. Yeah, I, I'm a sports guy, and I never understood that one. I've had when I was playing baseball, I, I made I made I was like, look here, I'm not slapping no one's ass, and if you slap my ass, we're gonna have an issue. So, and it's especially creepy when you when you got like 12, 13 year old kids playing little league and coaches doing it. Then it's like, look here, Jerry Sandusky, keep your hands to if yourself, a, all right? If I was a baseball player, I would just like sit on a Hershey's bar, so <laughs> like I had shit all over my ass. And then even if you didn't see, he slapped it. You'd be like, "Oh, what the fuck!" Dude, Jesus, that guy Redfield? doesn't know how to wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wipe your ass with your uniform? What the fuck's going on back there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Is that nuts in there? Yeah, I had to get uh-huh. a payday. I couldn't find a Hershey's bar. <laughs> well, I mean, look. I, my thing is, I just, uh, I, I think that sexual harassment obviously is an issue. And it needs to be dealt with quickly and severely when it happens. My issue is, once again, you have a group of people who, unfortunately, are very vocal, who anything they don't like, they automatically call it that. And it's like, just Mm -hmm. because you don't like something doesn't mean it's harassment. All right? Saying the word ass in front of a female at work is not sexual harassment. It might make you an asshole who can't read a room, who... You know, if you, I mean, if I worked with a, a, a hardcore Christian and we were in a one on one situation, I, I mean, does this make me a hypocrite? Maybe, but I would, if, as long as that person always treated me with respect about their religion, they weren't trying to shove it down my throat, I would do my best to respect the fact that they probably don't want to hear the, me talk the way we talk on this podcast. And so right. I would, I would, out of respect for them, because. Those who want respect show respect. And if I'm shown respect, then I will reciprocate. And I will show you respect till you give me a reason not to respect you. And that's just how I was raised. I don't know now if that is that right or wrong. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just how I was raised. I can't help it. My ironically, my mom beat good manners into me, which is not how you're supposed to yeah. instill good manners, but she did it. No, so it's it's kind of the same now, only you can only respect the people that have the same beliefs as you. See, I, but I don't feel that way. I'm, I work with people who I have, our beliefs are just the antithesis of each other, polar no, opposites. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's oh. the norm now. Well, that's, that's the whole issue. It's, it's the adversarial, goes back to what I was saying, adversarial language and the us versus them mentality. And if you're not with us, you're against us. And that's, I mean, that's like addict type thinking. It's all or nothing. Either I'm going to drink all the booze or I'm going to drink none of the booze. I can't just have two or three beers. You know, I can't smoke a joint before I go to bed. I got to smoke all day long. I mean, that's, that's, that's not a healthy mindset. And people who are like that, they really need to get some help and realize that that's not a good way to go through life. That's not how life works. It's not all or nothing. I, I hate. To, I mean, I hate to, to burst their bubble, but I mean, if if the world did work that way, it'd be a pretty boring world. I mean, isn't that well, what we talk about when we talk about PC, the PC police run amok? Is that they all want us to right. think? They, those type of people want us to think and act and speak and dress and be all the same. I don't want to. I, the whole uh, world. First of all, a world full of people like me. I, it, it, we'd last one generation because I'm pretty much antisocial. So, <laughs> I mean, if everyone was like me, no one would leave their house pretty much. So, <laughs> that's just how I am. I don't want that. I appreciate, I appreciate different 
people and their personalities. You know, it, it for a lot of it's going to sound stupid, but it kind of makes life interesting, makes life fun. Not everybody can be the life of the party, but not everybody can be the wallflower either. And I don't want everybody to be that. So I, I just, I, I, I don't know. That whole all or nothing mentality, it, it irks me. It just, yeah. it, it really does. Hey, by the way, uh, I didn't mention this, but um, when we were talking about Bill Cosby, he probably is not going to serve any time for this. That's one of the Which worst parts of this, too. You it's, think they're going to give him like some sort of medical like house arrest or something? No, I think he's going to I think he's going to get off. He's going to be found innocent. Oh, you they, think he's going to beat the rap completely? They they don't have a strong enough case. He's You've got uh, an unreliable witness whose testimony has been savaged by the opposition and you got a couple of brothers on the uh, jury too. Which I didn't even know about. I listened to uh, it was one of Adam Carolla's podcasts. He was talking about uh, he was talking with Mark Garrigus about the situation, and and yeah, he's like, "There's no way that they can get uh, a unanimous conviction on him with the uh, not not just with the race issue of having black people on the on the jury." But between that and and the and the actual testimony from the victim, so I don't know that's it's kind of yeah. the saddest part of this this whole thing. I will say this: but, I um, have a, f- a few friends on social media who defend Bill Cosby. Really? Like, I mean, to this day, I like okay. I'm I, I'm gonna be honest with you. If this was one per one female that came out and said this, and that was it, I would have my doubts. Because of one of who he is, to it, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that if he's this type of guy, that he never guys like this always have a pattern. It repeats itself. Right. You know, like maybe in like two percent of rape cases, it's it's a one time thing. Communication got crossed and it ended up in a date rape type situation. And I mean, maybe. In two percent of those cases, but most guys who are who are sexual predators, most people, period, women. I mean, you know, look at all the look at all the high school f- female teachers that are you know every week. There's at least one or two in the news. Sexual predators repeat patterns, and just like they go after the the weakest of the pack or the perceived weakest of the pack, they repeat their patterns because well, it's worked in the past, so why wouldn't it work again? Right. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of trying people in the court of public opinion, but also, you know, when you everybody hears stories about celebrities, everybody knows the one story about Richard Gere and the gerbil. Did he do and, uh, it or not? Who, who the fuck knows? It's just an urban legend at this point. He may or may not have had a gerbil in his ass at one point. But if you heard 40 different stories about 40 different animals that were in Richard Gere's ass, you're like, well, <laughs> clearly there's something going on here. Well, if you also had 40 ex-girlfriends going, yeah, you know, once he got comfortable enough to ask, he wanted me to stuff a gerbil up his ass, uh, you pretty much go, yeah. okay, he likes gerbils in his ass for whatever reason. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like A-Rod. Apparently he's... You know, Alex Rodriguez, you know, former baseball player, is, is dating J Lo, and a couple of his ex girlfriends have come out and been like, "Yeah, well, he's a voyeur, and he likes high risk sex, and he likes girls to dress up in Catholic school or his f- girlfriends dress up in Catholic school girl uniforms and shit." And I mean, I'm reading this and I'm going, "Oh, okay." I mean, there's a lot of guys with the whole you know cheerleader outfit type thing, whatever, and. Yeah, I'm sorry. Fucking in public is kind of fun because there's the thrill of getting caught, you know. Right. Oh, that, blah blah blah. Shit. You know. And so I'm that's like, that's so a, that's amateur hour, man. Yeah, that's when I hear that. I'm like, and that doesn't you even think this is embarrassing him. Yeah, right. this this is, <laughs> if he's embarrassed by that and he's a sexual prude. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's no, that's right. that's nothing, especially these days. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've well, watched a woman. I've watched I've watched a hundred guys jerk off into a bowl, and a woman make an omelet out of it and eat it. I mean, if that's Jesus, <laughs> if there's people that get off on that, then 
honey, dressing up like a cheerleader, he's not asking you to do a whole lot. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Plus, a, a peek into the male mind. Uh, when we were talking about Richard Gere and the supposed 40 ex girlfriends, I was actually weighing in my mind for a second. Well, let's see. You get to sleep with 40 hot models, but for every hot model, you have to take an animal in the ass. Hmm. Is it worth Would it? I? <laughs> yeah. This, this, yeah. <laughs> this is okay. Patrice O'Neill had a bit where he was trying to explain shorting his cock. He was trying to explain men to women, and he goes, "Women, men are are dumb, but we're philosophical about our dumbness." And like you could tell, the women in the crowd were kind of like looking at him like a dog. You just shown a magic trick too with the cocked head, and he goes, "Let me explain. This is a conversation that can last for a couple hours between five guys." Would you fuck a bitch without a nose? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, eh, rest of her looks good. Yeah, eh, I fuck a bitch without a nose. You know? Well, oh, it's funny because it's true. I think, I think we've dug our, our hole deep enough for tonight. Huh? If there's no, if there's anybody out there that we haven't pissed off in this episode. Then this then, is just checked uh, all the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this oh. is we're kind of we're kind of like a, a walking trigger warning in this show at this point. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Out, this has gotta be the title of the show. <laughs> trigger warning. I think we already had one called Trigger yeah, Warning. We we did. Oh, did we, we did. Oh, Alright. <laughs> the return <laughs> son of trigger warning. Trigger warning slight return. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, if you're still if you're still there, thank you for listening on iTunes and at ChristopherMedia.net. And thank you for following us on social media at Unregimented Pod. You can email the show unregimented at ChristopherMedia.net. And yeah, I, th- I think Instagram's still floating out there, uh, at Unregimented on Instagram. Uh so, oh, the the craziest thing that's happened during the show is uh, the Emperor of Japan has voted to, has been allowed to abdicate his throne. So, all right, you know, just, it, it, the Trump week's winding down, or it's, it's slowing down at this point. But who knows what'll happen by the next time oh. you hear our voices? Yeah, he's actually oh, stepping wait. down. That like never happens. It's usually, uh, yeah, usually you die in, as an emperor. He's abdicating the throne. He's like, listen, man, I'm done. I'm I'm done kinging. Uh, you know, I got got right. some retirement to do. He was watching the news. Trump saying that he missed his old life, and he's like, yeah, me too. Fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he bought he bought a hundred thousand dollar RV, and he's gonna go tour around the U.S. in it. <laughs> you know, right? we're gonna, well, kick, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna have to kidnap fish show until and make him week. tour Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Take a Pacific Rim tour in his RV, turn into a boat. All right. With that being said, we'll, we'll abdicate the show until next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Later, guys. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. And thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Imagine the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet, all in one place. Go ahead. Dare to stream.
with Discovery Plus. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, Food Network, and more. If you can dream it, you can stream it. See what I did there? Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love. 